in you brings us to Orangeburg, South Carolina. The South Carolina State Bulldogs are striking up the band and tooting their own horn in the MEAC. Standing in their way is Reuben Carter and the Rattlers of Florida and m Elimination Saturday is what they call it, and it's MEAC football next on ESPNU. head coach at Florida A&M, meeting Buddy Pugh, head coach at South Carolina State, as ESPNU College Football, presented by City, comes to Dawson Bulldog Stadium in Orangeburg, South Carolina. We're at the midway point of this 2007 college football season. Let's check a look at the standings at the MEAC. First of all, you have two teams that are unbeaten in Norfolk State and Delaware State in conference play. There are four teams with one loss apiece, Hampton and Morgan, and of course, today's combatants, South Carolina State and Florida A&M. Hello again, everyone. Charlie Neal, along with my partner, Eddie Robinson. Welcome to Orangeburg, South Carolina. And Eddie, you have these two teams with one loss each. A loss by either one kind of eliminates them as far as contention for the championship this year. Well, Charlie, you're exactly right. I don't think a two-loss team will have a chance to win the MEAC in 2007. Both of these teams, of course, already have already have one loss, so this is a very important game. But South Carolina State in particular, they were picked to finish first in the MEAC, and they have big powerhouses, Delaware State and Hampton, coming up in the next two weeks. This is a must-win game at home for the Bulldogs if they want to win the 2007 MEAC title. And, of course, Florida and m came in with high hopes this year, and one of the things that they have pinned their hopes on is a freshman running back by the name of Philip Sylvester. He's second in the nation in all-purpose yards, averaging 207 yards per game. Now, Sylvester was 100 meters Sprint champ in high school, you can see he has the speed to go the distance if he gets a crease. Also a dynamic kick returner. And what I like about him, he has a chance to break the freshman rushing record set in 1953 by Willie Gallimo, who was, of course, a FAMU great and a Chicago Bear player also. All right. When you look at this South Carolina State team, you're looking at a team who a year ago was averaging 27 points a contest. This year, only 12 points per contest. And they're looking at their quarterback, Cleveland McCoy, to get them into the red zone and into the end zone. Yeah, of course, they're last in the conference in red zone scoring and so they must improve when they get into that area but Cleveland McCoy is a guy that can also run as well as pass from the quarterback spot now they're averaging 207 rushing yards per game which is second in the MEAC so they'll ask him to do a little bit more running today but he has to improve his passing also in the past he had a pretty good touchdown to interception ratio this year he has six interceptions and only three touchdowns if he can improve that ratio today get the Bulldogs into the end zone when they get into the red zone they can have some success and maybe win this football game against FAMU the senior out of Hollywood, South Carolina. There he is, Cleveland McCoy, the head coach of the Rattlers of Florida a &M in his third year in Tallahassee. Is Reuben Carter, a former NFL player who played 12 years in the NFL with uh, the Denver Broncos. And, of course, on the other side, Buddy Pugh. And he is in his eighth year as the head coach here in Orangeburg, South Carolina and uh, was an assistant for many, many years. I should say a sixth year here in Orangeburg as the head man there. And you see his record, 41 and 21, as the head coach. Florida and m won the toss and has elected to receive. And there's the deep man to return it, and that's Philip Sylvester. We talked about him second in the nation in all-purpose yards, averaging just under 27 yards per kickoff return. Has not had a touchdown this year, but has had one that he's run back for 69 yards, and he's uh, waiting to receive this kick. Yeah, Charlie, that's a pretty good average to say that he doesn't have a touchdown on the year, so if he can put one in the end zone, that average would go up another 5 or 10 yards. No question about it. Here's the kick. This one's underway. Sylvester will feel it at the 15. Sylvester out to the 30. Still on his feet. Breaks a tackle. Down the sideline he goes and finally tipped up at about the 45-yard line. But a great return for Philip Sylvester. Yeah, Charlie, that wasn't a missed tackle. That was a broken tackle. He just did a great job of not being stopped by the initial contact. You can tell as he comes into the pile, you think he's going to be down there at the 30-yard line, but he's able to get out of there and use that speed. And keep in mind that this guy was a 100-meter sprinter in high school. 41 yards on the return. As you look at Leon Camel, a senior out of Belle Glade, Florida, who's taking over the starting job for the Rattlers of Florida A&M. And he replaces... Albert Chester, who quit the team just before last week's uh, 
game against Winston Salem out in Indianapolis and we have a penalty tagged on to that so it moves it 15 yards further down the field so at the 29 yard line what great field position for Florida and M on their first possession they're already down almost into the red zone First down and 10, a 41-yard return, a 15-yard penalty. Camel takes off and runs, picks up a yard, and that's it. It'll be second down and nine. Let's check out the Rattler offense, starting with the backs and receivers. Khalif Shepard is the fullback in the backfield with Philip Sylvester. The tight end is Todd Jenkins. Adrian Smith and Jarvis Funderburk are the receivers. And you see the men up front in Delancey Collins, Arcabello, along with Okafor and Wallace. Willie Hayward, their leading receiver, not here today. His grandmother passed away last week, and the funeral is this weekend, so he's home attending to that. Fumble. South Carolina State has it. A turnover, a mix-up between the quarterback and the center, and it is picked up by South Carolina State, and going to recovery is Tony White. That's just a huge break for the Bulldogs because this is an error by family. You can tell the quarterback just never really had the ball. It was snapped to him. He took his eyes off the ball and once he's on the ground. Gives the South Carolina State credit for getting on the football and really saving what could have been a disastrous start to this football game. It certainly was. And you're talking about turning all the ball over. They're dead even. They had six fumbles a week ago, even though they only lost two against Winston-Salem. That is Florida A&M. So they get the ball. It is South Carolina State, first down and 10. Cleveland McCoy play action. They're going to do a lot of that today. And this one goes incomplete. Trey Young, the intended receiver. Let's look at the starting lineup for the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. William Ford, a good one in the backfield, along with Spencer Miller at fullback. Octavius Darby is a tight end. Terrence Smith and Trey Young are the wide receivers. Up front, Colbeth, Dawson, Harrison, Richardson, and James Lee. Pretty good offensive line for the Bulldogs. Here's McCoy on the keeper, and he will not turn the corner as he is tripped up there by the defense of Florida A&M, led that time by Fabian Wilson. And we look at the line, but lineman as Carlos Roll, along with Lyman Reed, Houston, and McGriff. McGriff a little bit banged up, as is Roll. And you saw the linebackers here as the secondary, and Curry, Williams, Beach, and Donovan Johnson. Second down, make that third down and 10. Screen, McCoy to Trey Young. Young dropped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Maybe a loss of one. Well, good, good defense early by FAMU, and even after that fumble, they'll still have good field position after South Carolina State is forced to punt on three quick plays and in a punting situation. So three and out for the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. Punting the ball for the Bulldogs. Aaron Hare, sophomore out of Orangeburg, second in the MEAC in punting. Behind Gene Jamal Blanchard of... Hampton University. Good kick. And this one goes out of bounds, will not be returned. And there's a timeout on the field. No score. 12 32, the time remaining. First quarter here in Orangeburg. Key Miak matchup. Back in a moment. No score here in Orangeburg, South Carolina, along with Eddie Robinson, Charlie Neal. And of course, coming up uh, throughout this telecast, we'll be talking about. Uh, Ruben Carter's mission statement, the preseason MEAC quarterback troubles and the battle for a MEAC championship. Of course, six teams right in contention right now. We have four with one loss and two teams with no losses. And uh, as we are in the midpoint of this 2007 college football season, most of these teams have played at least five or six games. Charlie, any surprises in the MEAC so far as you look at the top of the standings in your opinion? I don't think there are any surprises. I mean, if, if there is a surprise, a lot of people might say Norfolk State might be the surprise. They're unbeaten in conference play. Their actual only loss that they had this year was to Rutgers University, one of the top-ranked teams in the bowl subdivision. So 
you know, that wasn't. Uh, well, if they can beat Hampton today, I tell you what, they'll be in, in first place and, and looking real good to finish off the season strong. All right, and Delaware State has a, has a game today. They're playing uh, at North Carolina A&T, a team that's lost 22 straight ball games. It is 23 after today. Are <laughs> <laughs> right, you premature there? You're premature. Here's Sylvester trying to turn the corner. Let's look at South Carolina State's defense, starting with the defensive lineman down front, Cedric Lloyd, Keon Brooks, James Simmons, and Marcus James. The linebackers, Tony White, Latavis Henderson, and Raphael Bush. And then the secondary, Terrence Allen, along with LaQuinn Ellaby, Marquis Hamlin, and Bailey Brinson. They lost Marshall McFadden, the junior, was a preseason. All MIAC selection earlier on in this con in this season and an injury to an injury to, uh, against Bethune Cookman. Play action, little screen to the right side or out of the backfield. They hit the fullback coming out with that one, and that's Anthony Edwards, a senior out of Atlanta, Georgia, Riverdale High. That's his first reception of the year. If you look at Leon Campbell, just a good job of running the play fake here, the little start, sharp bootleg, and hey, just give it to the fullback and let him get the yards and take the pounding. And Leon Campbell is a guy that can also run the ball extremely well, so he can still manage this game and, and do well, even though he wasn't the opening day starter. And here from the shotgun, he's working, rolling left. Let's it go. What a dangerous pass. He threw that between two blue jerseys, and he's lucky that wasn't intercepted. Yeah, was very close to intercepting. You said the free safety that Terrence Allen just had a good beat on the ball and tried to put it in some real tight area, but the receiver also had a chance to make the catch also. Look at here. Yeah, it did. Right through the hands of Terrence Allen, and fam, you guys just couldn't get, catch the tip. No huddle. Second down, 10. All across midfield for the second time. FAMU is into South Carolina State Territory. Fade going up top. And this was overthrown. Isaac West, the freshman out of Tallahassee, in place of Willie Haywood today, who was attending his grandmother's funeral, can't get to it. And look at the pass protection breakdown by Fam U because you can't have a, a rusher that's just coming there unblocked in the middle of the defense. That was Marcus James who put the pressure on him. It is third down and ten. We talked about the fact that Leon Campbell pressed in the service. Albert Chester, who was a preseason first-team all-conference selection, left the team last Tuesday, or Tuesday a week ago, citing injuries and fatigue, suffering the effects of nerve damage in his throwing arm, and, you know, went to the media before he went to the coach and was going to get an illegal procedure penalty flag against Florida and m Receive on the other side started moving before the ball was snapped. Yeah, and Charlie, you and I talked about that with Albert Chester. And, and my feeling on that is it, it's one thing to not be able to play because you're injured, but when you quit the team, it just seems like there's a little bit more going on. I know a lot of guys who may have been hurt and may go to the coach and say, hey, I can't play anymore. Illegal motion. Don't decline. Hold down. I mean, they may go to the coach and say, I'm injured and I can't play anymore, but you would expect them just to come on and maybe go to practice, maybe help the backup quarterback and still participate in the whole family and team atmosphere of football. And there's his career numbers. That is Albert Chester, over 3,000 career yards, 25 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. And, you know, one of the things against Tennessee State and Atlanta in that football game, uh, he was pulled in favor of Leon Camel, and that may have had something to do with it. Uh, word is he did not have the greatest relationship with the offensive coordinator, Bob Cole, and maybe even with the head coach, uh, Ruben Campbell, as they punt it away from the South Carolina State 48-yard line. It'll go to the end zone, and it'll be brought out to the 20. And, of course, the... Florida a m Rattlers are located in Tallahassee, Florida. School founded in 1887. Over 11,000 students enroll there. James Ammons, Dr. James Ammons is the, is the president. 
Nelson Townsend, the athletic director, and they're part of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. They were two-time members. They were in, left, and then came back. They won the first ever one double-A championship, as it was called back there. UMass, they beat. There we go. Ford into the secondary. Great yardage all the way out to the 45-yard line. A gain of 25 yards on the carry for the running back, Will Ford, the sophomore from Travelers Rest, South Carolina. And yeah, just good zone, man on man blocking. And what Will Ford was able to do was beat the middle linebacker. He had a clean shot to make the tackle, just too much speed coming downhill. And once he beat him, he got into the secondary untouched. McCoy now rolling right, throws. And has it complete to Darby, the tight end. He hit you one more time. Octavius Darby, the junior, red shirt out of Hollywood, Florida. Just back from an injury, and they say they must get him the ball, and they're getting it to him early here, second down. So they're moving the chains after three and out on the first drive by South Carolina State. Second down and five after that five-yard pass. McCoy right out of the backfield of Ford this time. First down and out of bounds in front of the Florida a &M bench at the 43-yard line. So McCoy moving the team in the air. And, of course, traditionally, South Carolina State has not been known as a passing team. Yeah, I mean, when you're averaging 207 rushing yards per game and you're second in the conference, why pass? I mean, it's like, you can't stop the run. We're not going to get to the pass. But I think what they're doing is just getting some quick, short passes that he can complete easy throw and catches then they could get run after the catch and here's McCoy keeping the ball good move on the outside and run out of bounds after about an eight or nine yard game right at the 35 yard line of Florida and M but a penalty mark is down and it's into the South Carolina State area looks like he may have holding on the Bulldogs yeah that was holding on the perimeter probably against number 81 Terrence Spencer Miller the tight end Our referee today, Sam Jones. And yeah, that was one of those calls where he, I mean, I think McCoy would have probably made the player miss anyway. But you can see the holding right here on the perimeter. There's the tight end. He's pulling him just a, yeah. Nah. He got the jersey. Yeah, he right had the, the jersey with both hands. And he's right in front of the referee. And I, I think the guy would have made the tackle had he not held him. So that's a good call by the ref. So from the spot of the foul, the ball has moved back to midfield. We had to be first and 17 now. South Carolina State. McCoy wide open, just a little bit too high, though, for Washington, the intended receiver. Matt Washington on the near sideline. The sophomore out of San Antonio, Texas. Let's look at South Carolina State. Of course, here in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Founded in 1896, over 5,000 students enrolled. Dr. Andrew Hugini is their president. Charlene Johnson, the athletic director. And they always treat us real well when we come down to Orangeburg. Yeah, they down I mean, we went to a, a nice restaurant today, the Brown Derby, right before we came here. Charlie had a great time, man. <laughs> Still trying to recover from that fish. <laughs> Eddie said he needs a nap. <laughs> well, they had been around 40 years, and I asked her, how do you get the name the Brown Derby? And she said that her, her dad's name, or their last name is Brown, and her dad used to wear a derby back in the day, so there you have it, Brown Derby. <laughs> All right, no score here. First quarter, timeout, South Carolina State. Are these numbers right? Yes. Do you know what this means? It means we have doubled in the last six months. So we're going to have to hire more people and move into a bigger space. ESPNU College Football is presented by City. Let's get it done. No score here in Orangeburg. A great day for football. A great crowd on hand as youth in ROTC day. And I don't see an empty seat in the house. Yeah, and of course, they were crowded way before the game, Charlie. I mean, two hours before the game, you had people in the stands. We thought we were running late almost. We had to hurry up and get here. Yeah, Sam Hughes' <laughs> band is not even here. So just think if the band came, it would be no seats. Yeah, that band couldn't have fit in those seats. <laughs> it is second down 17 for the... South Carolina State Bulldogs, a drive to start at their own 20-yard line, a 24-yard run by Ford to help them get into this position. But this pass is complete, but wishing he had not caught it was Dustin DuBose, the junior from Darlington, South Carolina, as he loses yards, about two more yards, or three on the play, so to bring up a third and 20. 
Yeah, fam, you. I mean, this is just good film study. You know when they get into those sets, they like those little quick wide receiver screens. Don't let him get a chance to get started. Just get out there and make the tackle as soon as he touches the football. That was Curtis Holcomb coming up from his cornerback position making that stop. A freshman out of Southridge High down in Miami. So we're seeing the youth playing significant roles on both of these teams. Here's McCoy standing in the pocket. He's going to take off and run. Makes a good move and inside the 40 down to the 39-yard line. But he's still going to be about five yards shy of a first down. This is what McCoy can do. Hey, no one open downfield. I'm just going to take off. And he turns into a runner. I mean, he's not a quarterback that's scrambling looking to throw. He's a guy that can make people miss and get first downs and moves the chains. So they'll punt it away from the 39 of Florida A&M. Their deepest penetration today. And the punter for South Carolina State is Aaron Hare, sophomore out of Orangeburg. There he is, number 36. Now we're going to get a flag for delay of game. And that's going to be a penalty against... Delay. Come on. That's going to be against South Carolina State. South Carolina State came in averaging about 94 yards in penalties per contest. And they've been penalized twice here today. Well, that penalty is what killed that last drive. On the first and 10 play, they had the holding call and backed them up. And not a good kick this time. This one goes out of bounds. This one was shanked off the side of the foot of the punter hair. Don't forget college football on ESPNU continues Sunday afternoon. The Tigers of Benedict take on the thoroughbreds of Kentucky State in an SIAC matchup down in Frankfort, Kentucky. It's SIAC college football. ESPNU Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Beth Mowens and Jay Walker will be doing the honors down there tomorrow. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. First down and 10 now for Florida A&M. And off to Sylvester, and he is tackled in the backfield. Nothing doing there as he is brought down immediately by Tony White. We've seen Tony White make a couple of good tackles already this afternoon. Number 44, Junior out of Seneca, South Carolina. And yeah, that's the way you want to attack a guy like Sylvester Phillip. I mean, the guy that has that kind of speed, you want to keep him in between the tackles, come up there and fill those running lanes where he can't get into the open field and use that great speed to try to break a big running play against you. In the backfield with the quarterback camel is Edwards and Sylvester. In motion is West. West trying to turn the corner on the end of round, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. The defense of South Carolina State has really, really hung tough. Yeah, I mean, the Bulldogs are biting on defense. They're coming up and stopping the run early, and that's what you want to do. When you have a team that's coming on the road, you want to stop the run, force them into passing situations, get them into those third and longs. Then you can bring pressure and make bad things happen. You see Phillip Adams there, number nine, a sophomore out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Last year in this game against Florida and M down in Tallahassee, he blocked a punt that led to a touchdown that led to the win by South Carolina State. It is third down. Camel standing in there. Plenty of time. Now he takes off. Still on his feet. Knocked forward, but it'll be a, about a yard shy of a first down. Yeah, and I tell you what, the clock in his head had to be ticking because he almost <laughs> he almost fumbled that football. You can see the pressure by South Carolina State is finally coming, but you just can't wait and wait and wait. You got to get moving at some point. Hey, that ball is bouncing around. Very fortunate that he was able to maintain possession of that football. Normally about three seconds a quarterback has to stand in the pocket without a lot of pressure. He was down there four seconds before he even took off and ran. So they'll be punting it away again. This is from their own 32-yard line, their third possession of the day. Remember, they blew a golden opportunity, their first possession of the day, as a penalty, penalty marker goes down from the 14-yard line. Here's Trey Young on the return. Another flag is thrown. He's back out to the 30, so let's see what all these penalty flags are all about. Well, you have one at the initial line of scrimmage, and I think you have a block in the back further down on the return. Sam Jones is our referee. Let's try to talk with all of the referees to see what you have. <laughs> he had a false start. 
And a legal block in the back. And that block in the back penalty, that's one that the coaches really don't like. Because the, the adage is if you can see his numbers in the back, then just don't block him. It's one that's very much avoidable, but it happens all the time at every level of football. No question about it. And just talking a little bit about Orangeburg and the South Carolina State Bulldogs in their season, they started off with a loss to Air Force. 34-3. They were held to 160 total yards. They beat Bethune Cookman 24-14. McCoy had 66 yards running, 88 yards passing, and passed for two touchdowns. And they were able to we get two to the two penalties on the play. Six players on the line of scrimmage on the offense. During the run back, we have a block in the back. The twos were offset. We got a replay. Replay fourth down. In that Bethune Cookman game. South Carolina State's defense got to the Bethune Cookman quarterback and sacked him six times. Then they lost to South Carolina 38 to 3. Ford had 112 yards for South Carolina State in the losing cause in that one. They beat Winston Salem 20 to 7. And then they lost to Norfolk State in double overtime a week ago, 20 to 13, even though they had 100 more yards than the Spartans, but had three turnovers and they sacked. Norfolk State three times. And that loss really had to hurt because they lost on a halfback option pass in right. double overtime. So yeah. when you lose in double overtime, then on a trick play on top of that, something that you really have to try to get over. Well, I was talking to their defensive coordinator, that is uh, South Carolina State yesterday, John Hendrick. Here's Trey Young once again on the return, and he's dropped it to 25 this time, and another flag is down. Another penalty marker down over at the 18-yard line. And John Hendricks said they went to a zone defense. He started to go to a man-to-man -man in that situation, and he, he went with the zone, and the player just took his eye off the receiver just for a second, the tight end, as we get holding against South Carolina State. And uh, that was enough to allow the receiver to get open and get the pass. And this penalty is going to be whistled against Travance Jackson, number 17. And when we come back, South Carolina State will get the ball first down and 10. In Orangeburg, South Carolina, great afternoon here at Dawson Bulldog Stadium for this MEAC matchup. Along with Eddie Robinson, I'm Charlie Neal, and of course, Florida and m taking a trip north in their visiting white uniforms from Tallahassee to take on the blue-clad Bulldogs of South Carolina State. 20,000-plus in the stadium here this afternoon. Bulldog Stadium. We're in the first quarter, no score, 546 the time remaining. From the shotgun, here's Ford, or I should say McCoy, decides to keep it on the option. He put it in the belly of Ford, took it out, and went down the right side and got about nine yards. This is a great play fake, man. Food, everyone putting it into the belly of the fullback. And like you said, Charlie, pulling it back out. You can tell a couple of the FAMU defenders are still going for the runner. But look how he makes people miss. I mean, McCoy is a guy that is a runner, is extremely dangerous from the quarterback position. First down, he got 10 on the play, so a good run by Cleveland McCoy. I like the no huddle offense. It puts a lot of pressure on the defense. You don't get a chance to huddle up. You don't get a chance to talk over the mistakes that you're making throughout the series. So I think that's a big advantage to the offense when you get no huddle. So far, South Carolina State with 58 rushing yards in the game. Here's Ford into the secondary and Ford about five or six more yards. Second down and four coming up for the Bulldogs of South Carolina State, who beat uh, this flat Florida and m team a year ago, 28-21 down in Tallahassee. Ford, who just carried along with a young man named Deshaun Baker, who since graduated, combined for 285 yards. Ford had 132 yards on 14 and attempts a year ago against Van Yu. Second down now and four. From the I formation is where they work this time. Ford working from the center. And he gives it to Ford. I should say McCoy working from the center. Gives it to Ford who gains a yard. It'll be third and three. 
Well, South Carolina State is one of those football teams. You just have to stop the run against them. If not, they'll run it 30, 40 times a game, and they'll amass two or 300 yards rushing against you. I mean, you have to come up and be physical and get them out of that mode that they can just run on first, second, and third down. Because if not, you'll never see any passes. They'll just keep running it down your throat. No the question. Night. 207 yards a game. They're averaging rushing the ball. Ironically, though, they've only gotten it into the end zone three times this season. Ford hurdles one player still on his feet into the secondary midfield 45 40 35 and brought down right at about the 27 yard line what a run by will ford and that's how he gains and picks up those 100 plus yards per contest yeah i mean you get 20 carries with three or two yards and then you get one or two carries where you get a 30 or 40 yard gain and it's just man on man blocking he doesn't make a lot of people miss just weaves his way through the hole and has the speed to get down the field for a big game and now they run with a quick almost no huddle or no no chance for the defense to get set with Jonathan Woods getting the carry the sophomore out of Corpus Cove Texas and it's still a pretty warm day I mean even though we're into October so this is very fatiguing for a defense when you have to keep playing the run over and over again so you have to get some substitutions in there at some point for FAMU that's a 46 yard run that was by Ford so he's had two long runs one of 24 one of 46 pass out in the flat complete to Trey Young first down inside the 15 to the 14 for the Bulldogs so they're moving the ball both on the ground and in the air well of course they're into the red zone now Charlie and that's where they've been having trouble at all year so we'll see if they can fix those woes and try to get a touchdown and not just get to the red zone and come up empty hand they're last in the conference in red zone offense nine of 18 50 percent four touchdowns three running one pass and of course they've kicked a couple field goals wide open touchdown South Carolina State and it's to Octavius Darby the tight end his first touchdown reception of the year and his fifth catch and that's what you want to do after all of those physical runs the 46 yard run by William Ford then you get to a situation where you're able to go play fake to your tight end he's wide open in the back of the end zone and then you don't have to worry about not scoring in the red zone for the point after Stephen Stephen Grantham it's up and it is good seven nothing South Carolina State here in the first quarter with 323 to go first down play action is always extremely effective look at the linebacker from Florida A&M number 44 Vernon Wilder he sees it but just a little bit too late can't get there to make the play touchdown by South Carolina State he knows it right away. That's a good job from a quarterback position. And hey, when you've only thrown three touchdowns the whole year, you feel good when you get that monkey off your back. You had a good drive. You had a couple good runs. You get a touchdown for your team inside the red zone. You're up 7 0. The hometown fans are doing well. Feeling good here in Orangeburg so far. So the 13 yard pass to Octavius Darby. And Darby has been injured. He is back. And he made his presence felt on that one. He's caught two passes today. He came into the game with only three receptions all year long, and now he has two today, one for a touchdown. And you can see the South Carolina State band. I mean, that's the marching 101, so I guess they have one more member than the Fam U band who's not here. But look at the excitement that they're bringing. They said one more member okay, than the marching 100. Well, they're trying to top them with 100 and 101, so I'm and assuming they, they're one actually, bigger. There's actually about 200 in the 101 <laughs> and about 300 in the 100. And I think all of those uh, band numbers have to be adjusted. I mean, the bands are so big and, and so massive these days. I think you counted, was it with 32 tubas in the band? 30, or, yeah. 30 tubas? I mean, wow. That was a seven-play, 91-yard drive. And here is Sylvester. From the 11 yard line, flag comes from way downfield. Let's listen to the call of the last. First of all, we have penalty flags down. Yeah, a lot of laundry on the field in this first quarter, Charlie. I mean, there's been penalties on just about every kicking play. For all penalties in the game, that's the first penalty against uh, Florida AM that's been enforced. 
of both the ways doing the run back on number 56. 10 yard penalty, first down. Damian Priester is guilty. But let's listen to the South Carolina State Radio Network on the call of the touchdown pass to Darby. Field, the wide side to the quarterback's left. McCoy, play action fake. Back to pass, looking, got a man in the end zone, wide open. Touchdown, South Carolina State. Octavius Darby, his first touchdown. First down and 10. So he must have been listening to me. It was his first touchdown. <laughs> Sam you with the ball. First down and 10 at their own 11. <laughs> Sylvester out to the 15. A gain of four. Second down and six. Troy, I really like the way Sylvester hits the hole. I and mean, this guy really gets north and south. He doesn't spend a lot of time trying to find the hole. He just kind of hits it and makes it. And for a true freshman, I mean, you have to like his numbers. Being second in the country in all-purpose yards is very impressive. Three 100-yard games this year, 101 in the season opener against Southern University, 222 against Howard, and 131 against Tennessee State a couple weeks ago up in Atlanta. And again, he gets the call, and he struggles for a first down or close to it. Up to the 20. He's got to get to the 21 for a first down. But South Carolina State's defense has been pretty tough. Against the run. Look at yeah, the guys are just coming in and being physical and making plays up front. And a guy like this, you have to keep him between the tackles. Then keep in mind, he's only a freshman. When you have a freshman, you got to try to rough him up. But they've been making plays on the edges and also up the middle. Hey, the Bulldog defense is biting. They're playing very well against the run at this point in the football game. 0 for 2 and third down conversions a day as the Rattlers of Florida and M. Let's see if they can convert one here on third and one. Here's Camel looking with plenty of time. Throws in the middle, has a receiver, and has the first down across the 25 to the 27. And Adrian Smith, the redshirt freshman out of Lakeland, Florida, on the reception. And that's a good job by Leon Campbell, just being patient. He just rolls out and you just keep rolling and rolling. You wait till your receiver uncover. Look at the receiver uncover. That's a good job by Adrian Smith, realizing that defender was looking at the quarterback. They just stop, get open in the zone, you get the first down. Going to the left side this time, nothing doing as James Simmons came up to make the stop on Phillips Sylvester, number 91 there. Great defense there by James Simmons, a junior out of Greenville, South Carolina. Came into the game with two tackles for losses, and that's something defensive linemen really like to see. You drop the receiver or the running back or the quarterback behind the line of scrimmage. And that's just as good as a sack because now you have him in a second and long situation. That's always the advantage of the defense. Second down and 14 is what South Carolina State has backed up FAMU. Down to a minute five left in the first quarter. Camel with plenty of time. Let's it go. Has a receiver there. Intercepted. Picked off on this end by Marquis Hamlin. The red shirt sophomore from Lamar, South Carolina, the leading tackler on his team in the third interception for Lamar, Mr. Hamlin, this year. Yeah, I think this is going to be the, the, the fault of Leon Campbell. He just puts this ball too much in the middle of the field. Look at the safety. The safety is able to make that play on the numbers. Now, that was a great interception by Marquis Hamlin, but if he puts that ball closer to the sideline, and I don't think the safety can have be a factor on that play. Second turnover today by Florida AM. This comes with 59 seconds to go in the first quarter from their own 36 yard line. Now, South Carolina State with the ball. First down and 10. McCoy going to the air. Trey Young wide open. First down and out of bounds in front of Florida AM's bench at the 34 yard line. So you look at what the offensive coordinator Joe Blackwell has put together in terms of a scheme for the Bulldogs today, and they're picking FAMU apart. Yeah, they are. I mean, they're playing a cover, too. You see both of the FAMU safeties are inside tight. Hey, the perfect route for that is to run the corner route. You push them inside and head towards the sideline. Now let's see if they can convert here. Remember on the last drive, they went 91 yards in seven plays. A big run, 46 by Will Ford that helped set up that touchdown. A 13-yard a pass, McCoy to Darby. And now they're marching once again after the interception by Hamlin. This time, straight up the gut. 
Goes the big full backwoods. Touchdown! South Carolina State. 33 yard run. Very impressive offensive performance by the Bulldogs so far. There you see Jonathan Woods, 28-yard touchdown run. Just going right up the gut of that FAMU defense. No one home to stop him, and he gives him the 13 to 0 lead. A little bit more than 16 seconds left in the first quarter. And that is his first rushing touchdown this year. See, they just get everyone running with the zone block, and he hits the cutback and goes downfield, able to freeze the safety with the block by his receiver there. And Yep, back McCoy in the Made center. It look easy. They give it to Woods over the right side. Woods right up the middle, 30, 25. Woods, 25, 20, 10, 15, 5. Touchdown. How about the numbers? Jonathan Woods into the end zone for the score. Exciting run for Jonathan Woods. So Jonathan Woods with his first rushing touchdown this year. Had only played in four games. Came in averaging five, making two and a half yards a carry. And his longest run was 11 yards. So he goes 28 on that one and uh, makes it a 13 to nothing ball game as we look at a player from Florida and a little shaken up on the play and they're working on him and looks like uh, he's going to be all right. And that is Kendrick Washington, a defensive end out of Sebastian River, Florida. Well, South Carolina State hadn't scored many touchdowns this football season, so it's kind of fitting that you have guys that hadn't gotten to the end zone so far in 2007. Two new guys, Octavius Darby and now Jonathan Woods, both scoring touchdowns for the first time this season. So seven of the points, if the extra point is good. Let's go that touchdown. That's a good run, man. Yeah, that was a good run. Sure it was. <laughs> look, Mom, look what I did. <laughs> But if the extra point holds true by Grantham, it'll be a seven points put on the board by South Carolina State as a result of a turnover by Florida A&M. And the extra point is good. And it's a 14 to nothing game. 16 seconds is the time remaining in the first quarter. McCoy, 13-yard pass to Darby. Woods, a 28-yard run. And that's the scoring for South Carolina State. In college football, ESPNU continues Sunday afternoon in an SIC matchup as the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State hosts the Tigers of Benedict College. SIC college football that comes away right here on ESPNU Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. And for more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Charlie Neal and Eddie Robinson here in Bulldog Stadium in Orangeburg, South Carolina on Youth and ROTC Day. And they have a lot to cheer about. A packed house on this gorgeous Saturday in October, the midway point of the college football season. Well, Charlie, they also had a lot of football recruits, which is real good because they have those recruits coming here on campus and seeing your team doing extremely well and ROTC taking a break. In case you just joined us, the opening kickoff by Florida and M was run back plus a penalty. And they started the drive at the South Carolina State 29, but then fumbled the ball and was unable to score. Here's Sylvester from the 11 yard line on the reverse, trying to go the other way. And we have a flag down on the play. But here's an exciting run on the far sideline. Trying to bring it back up the field is Keon Strakem for the Rattlers of Florida AM on the reverse. A very busy Sam Jones this afternoon. There have been five penalties already in force so far today. Here we have an illegal block in the back, and this is going to be against Florida and M. They tried a little trickery. Of course, their dangerous return man is Philip Sylvester. And Start the back, doing the return on the receiving team, number 82. Taking out Phillips. So this one will be spotted back at the 15-yard line. Of course, a penalty from the spot of the infraction. So South Carolina State goes on defense. Bam, you on offense once again. And again, talking to their coaching staff, the thing that's hurt them is either turnovers or mistakes. If they could just have one sustained drive, they might be all right. Here's a screen set up on the near side. It's a mister, but we're going to have face masks. This is going to be whistled, I, be I believe, either against Keon Brooks. 
or 98 on South Carolina State. And that's uh, Matt Key. Number 98, Mike Matt Key. That looks like it's going to be face mask all the way on him. Personal foul. That's defense. Number 98. 15-yard penalty. First down. And with that penalty, the first quarter comes to an end here in Orangeburg. But it's been all South Carolina State on the offensive side. They put 14 points on the board. Led by Cleveland McCoy. And they lead it 14 to nothing. Orangeburg. Now. Well, they didn't change uh, sides of the field, so it must have been some time left on the clock for the first quarter. We thought the first quarter come to an end as they try a little end around with Adrian Smith, and now. Maybe the first quarter will come to an end. The scoreboard clock showed zeros on the scoreboard on the clock. We thought that was the end of the first quarter, but apparently it wasn't. <laughs> so, either way, it, the first quarter has come to an end now. <laughs> As you look at Leon Campbell, don't forget for up to the minute news for everything that is college sports, log on to ESPNU.com. It's an online service that is a gateway to the best in college sports content from ESPN, combining the latest news, scores, features, video highlights, podcasts, and much more. If you don't have ESPNU, be sure to log on to ESPNU.com and type in your zip code at the top of the page or call your local cable operator or satellite provider. We invite you to log on to ESPNU.com today because we are college sports. As we start the second quarter here in Orangeburg, along with Eddie Robinson, I'm Charlie Neal. It is second down. We'll call it about uh, three yards to go for the Rattlers of Florida A&M. They trail 14 to nothing in the contest. FAMU really needs to get something going on offense. Actually, they're down 14-0. Just need to settle down and keep giving the ball to your talented running back and just maybe make one or two big plays in the passing game and get back in this football game. Leon Camel. We get movement on the defensive side of the ball by, again, Matt Key. So he's committed two penalties in a row. This is going to give, well, unless he was drawn off sides. Let's see. Defense yep. offside, number 98. He had a face Five mask. Penalty. Still first down. He had a face mask on a previous play, and then he jumps off side. So he gives Florida and M. An opportunity to pick up the first down without snapping the ball. First down and 10 now for the Rattlers. Almost jumped off sides once again. That big fella needs to settle down just a little bit. <laughs> it looked like they're lined up in a neutral zone. They are. And we get a penalty marker down because it looks like a South Carolina State player was lined up in the neutral zone. And the Lions judge threw out a second flag and may have a little extracurricular activity after the whistle blew. Yeah, I think the discussion is, are they going to go to the Brown Derby after the game? <laughs> well, I highly recommend the Brown Derby. Matter of fact, you can get it at halftime, Charlie A. <laughs> Sam Jones. Okay, Sam, come on, tell us what's happening. We have two penalties <laughs> on the play against the defense. Defense, offside, number 98. <laughs> All personal foul, number 9, 98. Both penalty will be enforced. The first one because it was a live ball situation. The other one was a dead ball penalty, so there's going to be uh, 20 yards. Let's get out my calculator. They had an offside. They had a That's five yards and then a personal foul. Yeah, but before that, they had a face mask and the offside. So that was 20. Yeah, I mean, they, you keep on on this Talk drive. About 40 yards of penalties that they've given up on this drive. Two plays on this drive. So that's one way to move the football if you fam you. Yeah. 
First down and 10. Option to the right, left side. Camel. He slides down after a gain of about nine. So Leon Camel running the ball. You know, we talked to Ruben Carter. He talks about the recruiting being the key for them this year. He had to bring in 27 new players this season. 12 from 06 recruiting class had to start last season. So he had to play a lot of young people early as we get a pass. It was swung out to the flat on the right side, and it goes to Derek Williams, who's finally collared after a run by Marquis Hamlin, who has an interception that set up a touchdown early. Well, I remember when Ruben Carter first got the job at FAMU, he really talked about recruiting within the state. And if you look, out of the 22 starters, just two are from out of the state on defense, and only one guy is a starter on the offensive line. And that's Xavier Wallace, who's from Austin, Texas. Everyone else is from the state of Florida. And you can look at the talented freshmen that they have in Sylvester Phillips. Under pressure, and the receiver is knocked down. They say incidental contact. As the pressure was coming from the secondary, they had the safety blitz coming with Terrence Allen, the cornerback, coming in, number 15. Look at him. Yeah, this is a good scheme. Whenever you have a guy that can get a free hit on your quarterback and he's unblocked, man, that's tough. So, for our fam, you're going to have to do some protection things to kind of pick up those blockers, I mean, those rushers that are coming in there and, and not getting any blockers on them. Basically, that offensive line is pretty young, except for Justin Delancey for Florida a &M. The rest of them, Collins, Arcabella, Wallace, and Okafor are basically sophomores or redshirt uh, red shirt sophomores. Yeah, you put that with a freshman running back, this offense is going to be extremely good for years to come. No question. Fade into the corner, and this goes incomplete, and we're going to get penalty flags all over the place. No question about Bailey Brinson did not allow the receiver an opportunity to make the catch. And we're talking about Isaac West. Defense, much more mistakes. First, on the two-yard line. In the end zone, it's going to be Mark. There it is. I mean, and the penalties have just absolutely killed Sakon of State on this drive. And they had 40 yards of penalties between offsides and personal fouls. And then you get this penalty on a pass interference and you give them the ball at the two-yard line. Fam, you really has only one good positive play that they've created for themselves on this drive. Everything else has been gifts from South Carolina State. This is the fifth play of the drive. Most of them have been penalties. And nothing doing that time. The ball may have come loose. Very close to a, a fumble. He did hold on to it, but uh, they gave it to Anthony Edwards, number 36. And he holds the ball out. That's what it made it look like a fumble. But he was already on the ground. This time, and which again, submarined by Hamlin, number 11. And he does not... Well, does he get there? They call touchdown. a touchdown. I'm looking at the wrong yard <laughs> line, there. line there. I wasn't sure he got there. I know Hamlin was really, really low. Number 11 and got up under there and submarine to play. Yeah, just good downhill running. When you get down to the two-yard line, Ruben Carter's an old defensive nose tackle. Hey, he's not going to call anything tricky. He's just going to go man-on-man -man blocking and just power your way into the end zone. And now you're back into this football game. So now to make it a seven-point ball game, the point after is up by Wesley Taylor, and it is good. And it's 14-7 to with 13-10 to go. But we have flags down. We've got flags down. Let's see if uh, here's the touchdown. Defense offside, flying. And they're still offside. So the defense still offside. They've been penalized nine times, and I think about six of them on that one drive, weren't they? 13 10 to go. Bam, you on the board. First half. ESPNU College Football, presented by City, is brought to you by State Farm. Great service, great rates. It's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. 14-7, our score here, and we talked about the fact that 
this uh, Florida and M team wanted to sustain a drive without a lot of mistakes. Well, they didn't make the mistakes their opponents did. Their opponents let them go right down the field with a face mask, offsides, personal foul, offsides lined up in the neutral zone and pass interference in the end zone. That's, that's five the, penalties on that one drive. It's at least 50 to 55 <laughs> yards of penalties on one drive. But hey, when you're down 14-0 and you're on the road, you take the touchdown however you can get it. They still had to earn it at the end with the touchdown run by Anthony Edwards. So, hey, 14-7 ball game. Justin DeVos, a leading kick returner in the MIAC, brings it back from the 11. DeVos still on his feet. DeVos looked at sideline, and DeVos out to the 45-yard line. Justin DeVos, and you see why he is averaging over 30 yards per kickoff return. And don't forget, Thursday night, ESPNU delivers more college football as Arkansas Pine Bluff faces the Bulldogs of Alabama A&M in a SWAC matchup. And he and I will be down in Huntsville, Alabama for that one. Our Thursday primetime college football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. South Carolina State with the ball first down and 10 at their own 46-yard line after that good return. And here's a handoff to Ford. Ford gains maybe three yards. They'll make it two. It'll be second down and eight. We'll see if, fam, you can come out here and play some inspired defense. But of course, we know that South Carolina State is going to just keep running this football unless you can stop them. But they've gotten some rest sitting on the sideline. Their offense has been able to give them a touchdown, so now they're back into this football game at 14-7. Yeah, they did get some rest. <laughs> they needed it. <laughs> Darby was the man in motion. They were saying they were going to use a lot of motion today. Good move there by Ford. Ford first down inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. So Ford with a great move to spring himself loose because he was trapped against the sideline there moment, sideline momentarily. We see more and more teams are doing this. They're getting the running back coming out of the backfield because, of course, he's the best runner. You get him on the perimeter or he can make people miss. He doesn't have to try to avoid the big defensive lineman. At that point, he's just trying to avoid the cornerbacks and the safeties, and usually you can get some good positive plays in those situations. Raymond Harris in the center, lets it go. Here's Ford breaking tackles. 20, 10, touchdown, South Carolina State. 40-yard run. Will Ford, 120 yards rushing today already. And we're in the first half. Yeah, he came into the game with 429 yards, ranking fifth in the conference. Of course, he's moving up that ladder. And that play looked like it didn't have a chance. He ran into his own blocker. But then once he opened his eyes and got to daylight, he just took it into the end zone the rest of the way. They're, call they're calling it a 39-yard run officially. So make it 119 yards for the day. <laughs> he's a, they took a yard away from him that I gave you. I think he'll get it back before it's over with. <laughs> That drive didn't take long. Three plays, 54 yards, and it was set up by the great kickoff return by DeBose after Fam had scored. You can see they run the counter with the big guard and tackle pulling around, and he just kind of ran into his own guy and was kind of hiding. It looked like the Fam U players couldn't find him, and once he found daylight, just had the speed to get into the end zone. Of course, getting some good downfield blocking by his wide receiver. Look, he bumps into Big 72. All of the Fam U guys are trapped inside, only has one man to beat, and he has the speed to take it into the into the end zone for the score. Let's hear how Ernest Robinson and Bobby Giss on the Bulldog Radio Network called that one, that run by Will Ford. <laughs> well, we thought we had it. We got a technical difficulty. Anyway, there he is, Will Ford with the touchdown run. That's only his second rushing touchdown this year. So South Carolina State has scored twice on runs. Remember, they came in averaging 207 yards a game, but only had gotten into the end zone three times by way of the rush. They've done that twice today. And you listen to Will Ford on the sideline. He's like, hey, he's looking at his guys and his offensive line and saying, you know what, we're good. We're good. And I think that's what South Carolina State needs. They have to just believe in themselves because they're a good football team. Hey, we hungry now. We got to get it. We're hungry now. We got to get it. You've got to be hungry. <laughs> Sylvester from the 10. 
Another good return man, but he will not get past the 27-yard line as he is knocked down with a vengeance there by South Carolina State's Travance Jackson, number 17. Yes, yeah, Sylvester Phillips, man, only a true freshman. I mean, you can see a guy, he was playing on Friday nights last year to, to come back out here and from Mariana High School, which is in Mariana, Florida. Just a good job from Coach Carter getting all of these in-state guys to stay at FAMU. Yeah, he was a state runner-up in the 100 meters, high GPA, just a good work ethic. And they think the world of this young man. You never thought you would find a guy with a freshman that had this ability as they run it to the left side this time with Anthony Edwards, who scored the touchdown earlier for the Rattlers of Florida a &M. Here he is out of Atlanta, Georgia, Riverdale High, a senior, preseason second team all MEAC. He played back inside and just coming back with the option on the outside. And what happened in that situation, you had two South Carolina State players who took the quarterback, so he made the right decision, pitched it out to the tailback, got some positive yards. First and 10 at the 39-yard line, 21-7 ball game. Leon Camel, the quarterback. He's only been sacked eight times this year coming into the game. And what a pass and what a catch on the far sideline for first down. And on the receiving end, Javaris Knight with the reception. Number 15, the redshirt freshman from Vanu High in Tallahassee. I mean, just a good job, just a short roll out, just moving the pocket. Keep in mind that the quarterback is only 5'9", so he has to get those throwing lanes. And you can see, once he can get good vision, good throw and catch in front of this defender, over the cornerback and in front of safety, have to have some good precision in order to make that type of throw work. Option played. Camel keeps it, still on his feet. Breaks out of a tackle, finally brought down from behind, but not before he got about 10 yards on the run. And he kept that play in the belly of the fullback sure an did. extremely long time. It's like, I don't know if he should get a couple uh, get a couple yards for that, that drive also, because both of them seemed like they were running with the football for a couple of times, a couple yards. Leon Camel, senior, 5'6". Mind you, more of the quarterbacks that uh, Bethune Cookman has. In terms of stature, size-wise, as you saw the stats on him, first down and 10. Looking to the sideline for the play. Sylvester alone setback. And we got a delay of game against Florida a &M. And there's some good running backs Offense, in this Middleton Athletic delay, Conference. Number 16. Five-yard penalty. And you look at guys like Chad Simpson up at Morgan State who's closing in on the 1,000-yard mark, probably has it today. And they were in a dogfight with uh, Howard University on homecoming at last report, leading by three at halftime, 26-23. But Chad Simpson is one of my favorite running backs in this conference. Mike Ferguson, young man, even though his team is struggling at North Carolina a and he has 740-some yards this year and on a team that's lost 22 straight games. Here's a pass out the flat. This is incomplete. Good defense as West was the intended receiver. It comes down hard and slow getting up. And that's not West. Correction. That is Derek Williams, 84. Yeah, but what a job by Marquis Hamlin just timing this up. And he's playing safe to the middle of the field, trying to go with the corner route. He goes for the hit and the ball, which is always good. Uses that left arm, which is the long arm. Just a great job of defending that play, making sure that the receiver has no chance of making that catch. Second down. 15 for Florida a &M. At the 43-yard line of South Carolina State, 10 minutes to go, second quarter. Plenty of time. His feet got happy. Did you see his yeah. feet get happy back there? Camel's feet got real happy. He said, do I take off or do I stay? And yeah, that, turf, that turf is getting kind of hot out there. It's a hot day. And start pitter-patting those feet of the quarterback. You're Watch his feet. <laughs> his feet got happy there. <laughs> but you can see what a competitive little guy. I mean, he's, he's moving fast, real fast. I mean, if he doesn't see anyone open, hey, take off. Don't sit back there. Because you got to realize he's only 5'6", like you said. So he's probably, he has to see around the players because he can't see over the top of them. So when you can't see downfield, I'm sure he gets a little nervous. That situation, hey, take off running. It is third down now. And 12. 
for FAMU. So far today, one of three in third down efficiency. Campbell with time, lets it fly, incomplete. Let me show you why he has happy feet. Yeah, he's that wasn't intended some, for Adrian Smith. He's taking some shots. I mean, they, they blocked this up pretty good, and the, the rush comes late, but right there at the end. Yeah, that's why his feet need to be happy. <laughs> yeah. Good little hit there. Yeah, Keon Brooks coming there. I mean, you talk about a guy that's 6'2", 260. Knocking out a guy that's only 5'6", 170. I mean, hey, the laws of physics just don't bode well for Leon Campbell in those situations. So punting for the second, third time today for Florida a &M. Wesley Taylor. And a fair catch is caught and made. 9.41, the time remaining. South Carolina State leading it by a pair of touchdowns. <laughs> It's not easy going it alone. That's why we're making it easier than ever to get a State Farm agent for car insurance. Call an agent's office 24-7. Stop by or go to statefarm.com to get an agent who's there for you. Online, on the phone, or in the office. Like a good neighbor, State Farm Owners. Here at Orangeburg, on Youth and ROTC Day, the Rattlers of Florida and M find themselves trailing 21-7. College football and ESPNU continues in the afternoon. An SIC matchup, Benedict College taking on Kentucky State. SIC football on ESPNU, Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. And for more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Charlie Neal and Eddie Robinson here on a beautiful afternoon in October in Orangeburg, South Carolina, where the Bulldogs of South Carolina State have a 14-point advantage over the visitors from Tallahassee, Florida. And they have the ball first down at 10 at their own 13-yard line. Cleveland McCoy's gone all the way at quarterback. Roll forward to second back in the eye. A little play action now. Out in the flat to Trey Young. And Trey Young has the reception. And even though he was covered like a blanket down there, he came away with the catch somehow. Yeah, good coverage by Michael Curry, number 21 for FAMU, but just a good job of doing play fakes on first down. For a running team, you like that, but a hey, good throw and catch. I mean, the coverage was there, but give the receiver credit for going up and making a strong catch on that play. Hey, you know, one of the things we see a lot of teams do motion. We don't see South Carolina State with a lot of motion, but they do are doing a lot of play action. Yeah, and the play action always going to hold those linebackers. And here's an option. McCoy keeps it. And McCoy first down out to the 37-yard line. They'll mark it at the 38. Cleveland McCoy on the carry. He was sacked coming into the game eight times, but six of those sacks came in one contest against the Air Force Academy. Well, Charlie, we talked about that earlier. I mean, they were last in the conference in scoring and also last in red zone offense, but they only put up three points against Air Force and also University of South Carolina. So two of those losses that contributed to that bad rating within the conference were against teams that were at a higher level of, in the bowl subdivision. No question about it. As we try to turn the corner, here is Will Ford carrying it. He gets maybe two yards on the play. So against MEAC opponents, really their rankings and scoring and also red zone is not as bad. Well, I mean, you take away the six points that they scored against the Air Force in South Carolina, they're averaging 19 points a game rather than seven, uh, 12 points a game. They were third uh, most uh, or highest scoring team in the MEAC a year ago, 27 points a game behind Hampton and Delaware State. It is second down. Buddy Pugh's team's uh, always been a, a team you have to reckon with. Here's Ford. Hit right at the midfield strike, but gets the first down. Whenever you can run the football the way they do, I mean, they're always at the top of the league in rushing. When you have that type of rushing attack and a strong defense, good special teams, you're going to be in every football game. And see, they just keep attacking. I mean, they got a lot of different running backs. They zone block well, and, and they try to get positive yards. You don't see them really having a lot of runs that end up in negative rushing situations. That's true. They're second in the conference in rushing, averaging 207 yards a game. McCoy dropped the football, had to pick it up, and now has a little open field. First down, runs out of bounds at the 30-yard line. 
boy, he turned nothing into something because that had a little disaster at the beginning of that play because the ball hit the ground, but he picked it up and had the presence of mind to get outside on the first down. He's just no one's home, and everyone's playing man coverage, and McCoy just realized that I can pick this ball up and take off and just faster than the next guy. Here we go again. They keep the ball on the ground this time with Jonathan Woods on the carry. Woods comes to the near side, and Woods picks up about five for the Bulldogs. We're talking about Buddy Pugh. You see him on the sideline. His first year here was seven and five. And then in o, that was an 02 and 03 went eight and four and 04 he went to nine and two back to back years 04 and 05 and last year seven and four he is four and oh against florida and m he has never lost to the rattlers here's a woods again woods down inside the 15 to the 13 yard line jonathan woods FAMU is going to be forced to bring another defender into the box. I mean, they just can't sit here and, and allow. This is a bit of hit. A little lever out there smacking around. First down and 10. Bulldogs and now movement. A fade into the end zone and complete. The intended receiver was Philip Morris. And South Carolina State is the team that's doing the pad popping because they're they're really creating movement on that offensive line and the runners are just going downhill and making one cut and taking a positive yard. The defense, Offside. number 53, five-yard penalty, still first down. So Florida and M now returning the favor that South Carolina State Handed them a couple drives ago by committing defensive penalties to allow the ball to move closer to the goal line where it'll be first down and five for South Carolina State. Lone sudden back is Jonathan Woods in the backfield. Woods has it and Woods struggles down to about the six. He'll be a yard or two, about two yards shy of a first down. It'll be second down and two. Yeah, stop made by Big 71 Cameron Houston. He's been playing a pretty good ball game today. Doesn't have a lot of stats on the stat sheet, but he's been doing a good job of clogging up his hole and pushing the defender to the next spot. So we'll see if he can make another play and someone on this FAMU defense can maybe make a big stop against South Carolina State and try to get them out of this touchdown situation they're in now inside the red zone. Ford this time reverses his field. Comes back to the near side. Run down from behind. The little horse collar, if you want to call it that, by Florida AM. Not allowing him to, to turn the corner. Fabian Wilson playing in place of Ernest Williams, the uh, strong safety coming up to make yeah, the stop. Four shows good speed. I mean, usually you don't get a chance to run lateral like this and, and almost get into the end zone. And, but not for a little cornerback from FAMU coming up to make that play. He may have scored because he had the inside defender's beat to the corner. But more importantly, he gets the first down. He didn't get into the end zone, but it looks like he got enough to get to the uh, first down marker. Where be, oh, they got a measure. Get a measurement out. Yeah, it'll be first and goal. You're talking about... Uh, one of the players I want to take a look at when we get a chance is the left tackle, number 77 for South Carolina State, Nigel Pearson. Here's a young man who missed all of last year because of a foot injury. This is his first game since his freshman year. Okay. And they're pulling it tight. They're going to be a little short. Looks like it's a little short by a chain. You know, like a centimeter. <laughs> a little bit more now. They... Oh, they're going to move it. Yeah, they're changing around. <laughs> there it is. That's how close it is. I'll tell you what, Charlie, if they have to get another measurement, this chain game is going to get a workout going back and forth across the field. 50 yards. <laughs> but I was talking about number 77, Nigel Pearson, a junior out of Darlington, South Carolina. And the reason is this is his first game since his freshman year. He, bro he broke his foot. Then uh, they put a pin in his foot. He broke the pin in the foot, and they had to use a skin graft to uh, repair that injury. Then he broke his hand 
the left hand just before uh, the season started in training camp this year. He has missed 24 games in the last two and a half years, and he's in there. He's been upbeat all the time. He's still has two years of eligibility left. And all those injuries, you just appreciate being on the football field and having a chance to compete. Straight ahead, touchdown, South Carolina State with Evans tapers the fullback, the senior, out of Bluffton, South Carolina. I tell you what, so much for being last in the MEAC in the red zone and in scoring for South Carolina State. I mean, they come out here with some impressive drives, putting up four touchdowns in the first half of play, but still over five minutes left in this half. I mean, just very impressive going up and down the field with the running game and also Cleveland McCoy making some great decisions in the passing game as well. That's the first time this season that Evans Capers has carried the ball blocked. Or, but it went through. Looked like it was touched there by a lineman, but it went through, and it's 28-0. But Evans Capers from Bluffton, South Carolina, his first carry this year, it'll be a memorable one. Yeah, you like that. The 235-pound senior, I mean, he doesn't get a lot of chances to run the football. He's basically a big guard in the backfield, but that's why he's so excited. He's just a senior guy that's been around a lot. You like for him to be that type of player. He's a leader, and to get that touchdown and give these bulls out of the 28-7. Well, you know, what is even more ironic about Evans Capers is the fact that last year he did not have any attempts. He got injured midway through the season. Midway through the season, he injured his knee. He's an excellent blocker. More, more, more like, he needed that one bad, is right. He said, I hadn't touched the ball in two in a years. long time. <laughs> so he gets into the end zone, and he's a happy camper. <laughs> And that's what you like to see. A lot of different guys have scored. Jonathan Woods scored his first touchdown. Octavius Darby caught his first touchdown today. Then Evans Capers gets into the end zone for his first touchdown in a couple years. <laughs> and those fullbacks are like the unsung heroes. We talk about those guys in the NFL like the Lorenzo Nils, the, the Max Strongs, guys that just go out there and block and work hard and don't get a lot of chance to have any recognition. So whenever they can get a touchdown or do something good and get a carry, it's always good to see that. From the 11-yard line. Philip Sylvester out to the 26. Let's look at some of the mistakes fam you made. They had the ball in great field position. Good score, then they throw the interception here. Hamlin picks it off for South Carolina State, and they just haven't been able to do anything. They've had one sustained drive, and that was aided by five penalties by the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. So they get the ball at their own 27-yard line. First down and 10. Here's a fake pitch to the left side. Plenty of room on the right, the opposite side. And the pass is complete. But what a hit that was taken that time by Todd Jenkins, the tight end. And if I'm Todd Jenkins, I go back to the huddle and I say, hey, Leon, I was open right now. Throw it to me now. <laughs> long time. Don't, don't hold it that long. I was open a long time. <laughs> I mean, he was open. And no one was there 15 to 20 yards. But hey, you give Terrence Allen a chance to size me up and put the big hit on me as soon as I turn around. Leon, throw it to me early, please. Yeah. Terrence Allen started the last seven games last year, started this year out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Second down and two. Now, for Florida and m 455 to go in the first half and we have movement we're gonna have a false start against Florida and m penalties so far in this game 13 four against FAMU this will be number five offense false start number 75 That's still second down Robert Okafor Sophomore out of Jacksonville, Florida, Ruben Carter, who had an opportunity to coach in the Hula Bowl this past year, back on January 17th. And I talked to him about that. He said it was like deja vu all over again because he was the uh, MVP of the game in 1975 as a player. Yeah, I mean, a 12-year NFL. University of Miami, yeah. Yeah, 12-year NFL career, the first African-American to be an All-American at Miami and play with the Denver Broncos in a couple of Super Bowls. Quarterback sack. 
Relentless pressure that time. They were not going to allow him to get away. Raphael Bush, the sophomore from Williston, South Carolina, was the man who came in and made the sack. That's the 19th sack this year by South Carolina State. Yeah, and fam, you was having protection problems because it's been a couple times where South Carolina State has had the right blitz call where you have guys are coming free to the quarterback and give Bush credit. I mean, that's a good job of getting Leon Campbell down. This is a quarterback who can really make people miss. So whenever you get a chance to get that quarterback down with that free shot, you have to take advantage of it. In the backfield, nothing doing for Sylvester. The defense continues to wreak havoc. On Florida and M, and it'll be a punting situation for the Rattlers once again. They're trailing in this game 28 to 7. Their only score coming on Edwards' one yard run after they went 85 yards in six plays, aided by five defensive penalties by South Carolina State. Now, let's see if they're going to come after this punt or if Trey Young is going to have an opportunity to return it. And the punt gets away by Wesley Taylor. Will not be fielded. Now let's talk about Ruben Carter. We talked about the fact this is his third year as the head coach down in Tallahassee after replacing Billy Joe, who did many fine things. And Billy Joe, of course, went into the uh, College Football Hall of Fame this season. But the mission statement for Ruben Carter this year, create an environment to mentor young men Pursue the MEAC championship and stay within the academic mission of the university. Embrace relationships with coaches and leaders throughout the community. Maintain successful programs and compliance with the university. And a commitment to excellence while striving to develop leaders. And he talks about developing young men. Of course, his son plays professional football. And so he knows all about development. He was an assistant coach at Howard University. Like he said, played in the NFL for 12 years. He was assisted at Howard Temple, Maryland, San Jose State. He was also an assistant in the NFL with the Redskins, Jets, and Broncos. In fact, when he got the job at Florida and m it was three weeks before camp was supposed to start. He did a pretty good job in his first year there with uh, six and five. Here's a field reversal this time. Going the opposite way is Jonathan Woods. Well, if you look at the roster of this family team, and you have a lot of freshmen and sophomores, I mean, the whole offensive line are either sophomores or redshirt sophomores, except for one senior. You have the true freshman and Sylvester Phillips. And, and on defense, you have a lot of young guys starting. So he's really building this program the old-fashioned way. He's not getting the JUCO transfers. He's recruiting within the state, and he's redshirting those guys and developing them in a player. So you have to look at the long-term benefits of that as far as helping the family program with his mission statement I think this program is in real good shape in Ruben Carter's hands no question about it McCoy pass out to the flat and out of bounds is Darby the tight end so Mr. Darby with his third reception of the afternoon he also has a touchdown to his credit and it's very close to a first down they may have to measure once again to see if the first down was gained you're talking about scheduling. This is the third straight road game for the Rattlers of Florida A&M. They were on the road last week in Indianapolis in the Circle City Classic when they played Winston-Salem the week before. They went to Atlanta when they played Tennessee State. So third straight road game for uh, the Rattlers of Florida A&M who finally get a chance to go home to play Norfolk State next Thursday and not playing it on a Saturday and it's not a TV game the reason they're playing it on a Thursday is because Florida State's hosting Miami in Tallahassee and there was no place for the Norfolk State to stay so they had to move the, the game up to Thursday night well, plus you don't want to compete with all the hoopla that involves that game I think uh, scheduling down the road you may want to just have a road game when they're playing that home game with uh, Florida State because of all of the big things that happens in Tallahassee there'll be a lot of green in Tallahassee with all that <laughs> a lot of green. <laughs> so the first down is game. On the pass complete to the tight end. Octavius Darby, three catches for him today for 29 yards and a touchdown. Oliver Young has four catches, 47 yards. Leon Camel, 5 of 12. McCoy, 10 of 12, 92. 
yards for him today. And McCoy has also uh, run the ball pretty effectively. Six carries for 68 yards. Will Ford on the opposite. Here he is again. Campbell. First down. Now mark it at the six, 16. Make that uh, McCoy, rather. McCoy, we just talked about he had uh, 69 yards before that run. Yeah, what happened with this one is fam you gamble I and mean, they just blitz from the wrong side You can see the blitz are coming from the right side McCoy is running the option the other way So you're just a man short when you're running the option of course the quarterback is an extra runner So you don't really have enough people in your scheme in order to stop the runner and also the pitch man Now he has 90 yards after that 22 yard gain Ford, who already has hit over 100 yards a day Here's Trey Young almost running over the umpire and Trey Young gets it down inside the 10 to about the nine yard line with a minute 10 seconds remaining in the second quarter and the Bulldogs are already leading 28 to 7 threatening to score once again and it's very important that fam you can muster up a stop right here to try to keep South Carolina State out of the end zone and not go down by four scores in this first half Ronald Breeland has checked into the tight end here's Ford and Ford is dropped right at the line of scrimmage not much running room there. Jason Beach, the junior out of Pensacola, Florida, preseason second team all conference selection, making the stop. 34 seconds to go. South Carolina State has no timeouts remaining. Well, maybe they. Fam, you had to call the timeout because of confusion on the play. Time. Well, timeout called by Florida and M. First, well, they do have timeouts. Timeout. Left. I don't understand that. Anyway, don't First forget half. coming up at halftime was Sports Center U with Low Galindo and Tom Lugan Bill, number one LSU, taking on 17th ranked Kentucky and 11th ranked Missouri is playing number six Oklahoma in a Big 12 battle. And then we'll have scores and highlights of all the day's activity as far as uh, updating my latest results from the. What's happening to MEAC today? Delaware State leading A&T in Greensboro, 17 to nothing. That was the last report. Hampton was uh, had a seven to nothing lead over Norfolk State. Well, we got even a better update now. Delaware State is 20 to nothing at the end of two. Howard trailing 26-23, and uh, Norfolk State has scored five points now, and at 7-5, Hampton on top in the second quarter. Sounds like a baseball game. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like your uh, Yankees. Yeah, and I talk about my Yankees <laughs> up here, Charles. <laughs> This booth is kind of too small for this. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Joe Torrey. I tell you, he's one of the classiest people that you will find in professional sports. And uh, I just hope uh, that they'll hold on to it. But well, this is always an exciting time of the year. I mean, when you're playing in the NFL, you always have the World Series and the playoffs going on and the beginning of the basketball season and everything that happens with football. Just a lot of sports going on. Here's McCoy. Cuts it back. The one with 16 seconds to go. Gotta hurry up. Well, the, the clock will stop on the movement with the first down, anyhow, with the change. They did have timeouts, they had two timeouts remaining. That's why I didn't understand what they were using. I was looking at something up on the scoreboard and said they had none left, but uh, they did have two timeouts remaining. So they get the ball down to the two, 16 seconds to go, first and goal. Now let's see, does McCoy keep it? Does he give it to Ford? Does he give it to Mr. Capers? Does he give it to Jonathan Woods? Troy McFadden, who gets the ball? That's the $64,000 question. If you guess it right, I'll take you to dinner tonight, Eddie. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if we get to go back to the Brown Derby, one of Orangeburg's famous restaurants here, I'll have to go with McCoy, simply because you can get him in either an option situation or a rollout pass. But his running ability, and he's been making the right decisions in the passing game, I would trust him to have his hands on the ball. Look, 11 of 13 passing for 111 yards and one touchdown. And if you put that with the 207 yards per game in the rushing department that they're averaging, this year, I mean, this South Carolina State offense could look extremely scary. And he also has 96 yards rushing. So let's see who he has back there. He's got McFadden, Capers, and Woods. And he gives it to Capers, and Capers is in. Second touchdown, second carry. What an average. 
Yeah, he was excited after the first touchdown. I don't know what he's going to do at halftime. You won't be able to contain, contain him. He won't come out for the second half. <laughs> <laughs> two touches in the last two seasons, both today, both for touchdown. And that's what college football is all about. Here's a senior, you know, a guy who doesn't run the ball much, but is a leader on this football team, is able to score two touchdowns on two carries, and hasn't had a run in the past two years, but does a great job of blocking. Going after by Grantham, who had been ailing and had practice all week, had been on crutches, and he keeps splitting the uprights, and the lead is 35 to 7. And here's Mr. Capers again from Bluffton, South Carolina. And that was a eight-play, 64-yard drive. And I know Buddy Pugh and the offensive coordinator, Joe Blackwell, have to feel good about what is going on here today because you look at their drives they had a seven play 91 yard drive a six play 85 yard drive a 10 play 87 yard drive an eight play 64 yard drive i mean out of the you know i mean look at what they've done today their first five games three rushing touchdowns and today they've rushed for four yeah and, and make no bones about it i mean i know cleveland mccoy is having a good job of passing the football today but this bulldog offense is a running football team even though they run all the four wide receivers they want to be physical and establish the run and if you look at the big games they have coming up against Hampton and Delaware State you have to be able to run the football effectively and you want to get a good game and feel good about yourself and have everything going on at home with the atmosphere just a great way to start the football game for the Bulldogs and you saw a shot of Ruben Carter who's a defensive specialist made his living as a defense nose tackle, yeah. as a nose tackle with the Denver Broncos and the clock stops with 6.1 seconds to go in the second quarter on the return by Sylvester. And, you know, you know he has to be hurting all kinds of ways to see his team being manhandled the way they are so far this afternoon. I mean, you look at just rushing yards alone, 302 yards by South Carolina State in the first half. Yeah, and from a guy who played linebacker you know, 11 years in the NFL, of course, Ruben Carter played nose tackle for 12 years in the NFL. One thing that's, that's demoralizing when you can't stop the run you can pass on me and do a lot of trick plays but when you're just running it down my throat and I can't stop you 300 yards rushing in one half and four rushing touchdowns that's something to be upset about after going three and out on their first possession punting on their second possession South Carolina State has scored on five straight possessions the last five times they had the ball and they lead it 35 to 7 at halftime 302 rushing yards in the first half alone they have outgained Florida and M by 301 yards in the first half in this contest we'll be back It's halftime of the MEAC matchup between Florida a &M and South Carolina State. And don't forget college football on ESPNU continues Sunday afternoon as the Benedict Tigers take on the thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. SIAC college football in ESPNU Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Next week, ESPNU travels north to Hampton, Virginia as the 18th ranked Pirates of Hampton University welcome the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. It's homecoming for Hampton and ESPNU you will be there to bring you all the action next week from Hampton, Virginia. Going into this week, here are the MEAC standings with Hampton and Norfolk State today and Delaware State at North Carolina A&T. Howard at Morgan. We could have four teams with one loss in conference play this weekend, making the race to the MEAC championship very, very interesting. Here in Orangeburg, we still have a half to go to see who will be staying in contention. First half highlights and the second half coming up, the MEAC on ESPNU. Inside the park. As we get ready to start the second half here from Bulldog Stadium on the Dawson Bulldog Stadium on the campus of South Carolina State in Orangeburg, South Carolina, along with Eddie Robinson, I'm Charlie Neal, where the Bulldogs of South Carolina State have completely dominated the Rattlers of Florida a &M in the first half, 35-7. to 7. It started off, though, fam, you looked like they were going to get something going as Sylvester had a great opening kickoff return and put the ball in great field position for... Florida and M, but then uh, they had a lot of not a lot of running room for Mr. Sylvester. And then, but on the other side, here's Mr. Ford, his counterpart, Bill Ford. And here's a young man who had a whale well of a freshman season a year ago. 
132 yards against Florida A&M a year ago. In this game already, 131 yards in the first half alone. And there you see the nine rushes and averaging 14.9 yards per carry in the first half. Sylvester only nine yards on six carries, although he does have 100 yards on five kickoff returns. Yeah, very disappointing for Sylvester Phillip. I mean, here's a guy who came into the game averaging 113 yards per game, which was third in the MEAC, and only have six carries. Man, he's really struggling today. And give credit to South Carolina State's defense, but they've really had him bottled up. Of course, when you have a big lead like this, fam, you would be forced to pass, but early in the game, they still gave him fits, and he really couldn't get anything going. And Sylvester, only six carries today. They're 2-0 and when he touches the ball 20 times in terms of offensive possessions not counting kickoffs as Florida and M and their visiting white jerseys will kick off to start the second half and uh, they could be very demoralizing if South Carolina State who scored in their last five possessions was able to drive this one all the way down the field deep man to return it is Philip Mars for the Bulldogs of South Carolina State and of course you know there's been some people banged up for uh, South Carolina State Ernest Carlos Roll hasn't been completely healthy. Tyrone McGriff. Here's Philip Mars from the 15. Philip Mars has a wall, takes it down the field, and finally brought down at the 40 yard line by Leroy Van, number 32. But look at Mr. McCoy in the first half, quarterback who rushed for 96 yards in the first half, completed 11 of 13 passes for 100 yards and a touchdown. So everything that had been going the opposite way south all for Florida and then or should say for South Carolina State started going north for them today they completed passes they got in the end zone four rushing touchdowns in the first half as a team they only had three coming into the game here's McCoy bobbles the snap running and just throwing it away he threw it up into the cheap seats <laughs> That wasn't even on the sideline. He threw it up to the fans in about the fifth row on the far sideline. Well, I tell you what, the fam, you fans need something to cheer about to maybe catch a pass from Cleveland McCoy. You get a souvenir to take back with you to Tallahassee because he's he's basically, him and his South Carolina State offense has dominated this fam, you defense, just pushing them all around, running on them, passing on them, also scoring touchdowns through the air and on the ground. So very impressive first half by the Bulldog offense. Well, we said he was going to have to jump start this offense, especially when they got into the red zone that he was having trouble scoring down there and here's an option play here's McCoy still on his feet and still inside the 30 but bubbles the ball and Johnny on the spot is the offensive lineman Colbert Johnny Colbert number 50 saved the day Whoa. When it's going your way, it's going your way. It, it? It's just one of those type of days. Everything good for South Carolina State and everything bad for FAMU. You can see it look like, uh, I mean, give credit for the FAMU defender hustling out there, Michael Creary, pulling off the South Carolina State receiver from getting. But then, hey, big Johnny Colbert just hustling down there and making plays for South Carolina State. McCoy stands in there, lets it go wide open. Touchdown for out of the backfield, Will Ford. Yeah, Will Ford just coming out of the backfield and running the rail route, and he came into the game with eight receptions for 55 yards, so he's more than just a runner, and man, what a game for South Carolina State, and especially Cleveland McCoy. Already had one touchdown pass in the first half, and now adding another one to William Ford. And this is on the we haven't even played a minute of the second half. They just took the second half and drove down the field. Three plays, probably four plays. This was a 20-yard drive or 20-yard play. And the point after is good. 42 to 7, our score. Now 116 yards rushing. Back to pass is McCoy. Steps up in the pocket, throws it out there. Will Ford catches it. Touchdown, South Carolina State. Will Ford dropped one like that last week. He didn't drop this one. Touchdown, South Carolina State. It took 53 seconds. 
Didn't take him long, as you heard Ernest Robinson, the play-by-play -play announcer for the Bulldog Radio Network. As you look at Rule Ford, a pair of touchdowns today, one by way of the ground, one by way of the air. Like you said, he dropped one against Winston-Salem in Indianapolis last week at the Circle City Classic, but he held on to this one today. And now it's a 42-7 to ball game. Most points that South Carolina State has scored all season long. They keep it away from Sylvester. And the fumble on the play on the return by Florida A&M. And that was Michael Benson who was bringing it back up the field. Michael Benson on the return, a reserve fullback. And they get the ball back at the 32-33 yard line. So FAMU has given up seven points in the second half and they haven't even had the ball. There you see the numbers on Leon Camel. Their own 32-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for the Rattlers of Florida and M. Trailing by 35 points in the contest. Sylvester on the carry and out to the 42. Very close to a first down. For well, the freshman. And if you're a family in this situation, you're starting this second half off down by 35 points you might as well just run your regular offense no sense sitting here trying to go run and shoot or try to go full wide receivers and no huddle and, and score a bunch of points hey just try to score one touchdown at a time and see what happens you still have to run the ball something and also include your passes well one of the things you have to be considerate of when you look at you talking about passes they do pick up the first down on camel's carry is the fact that there are 116 teams in the championship subdivision which was formerly known as one double a and this Florida a &M team is ranked 71st in passing out of 115, 16 teams. All right, so that's really not your ball game. So you can't all of a sudden change and be something that you're really not. Just be patient. Keep giving the ball to your talented freshman Sylvester Phillip and just run your offensive plays and see what happens um, at the end of the game. This time it's Sylvester Phillips around the left side. And he picks up a few yards before he is finally... Brought down by South Carolina State Sam Chester. I tell you what, he, he's the type of back that really scares me to play against him because he's the guy that you know if you miss one tackle or one person isn't in the wrong gap, he can go 80 yards or 90 yards and have that home run threat every time he touches the ball because of that great speed. I always preferred playing against a big slow back than a speedy guy like him. Yeah. This time going to the left side is Edwards. Yeah, Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards is the man who has scored the lone touchdown for Florida A&M today, and he picks up the first down with that run and goes to the sideline after losing the shoe. Seems like FAMU is going to try to give South Carolina State a dose of their own medicine, just trying to come out with five consecutive runs to start, to start their opening possession of the second half. This drive started at their own 32 yard line. And Camel, a little confusion in the backfield, and he's going to be dropped for a loss, led there by Cedric Lloyd, number 87, the defensive end, who got some help from some other people up front. Yeah, and you got Anthony Collins, uh, they call him Big Tony. You can see he's trying to get a push, but you know, he had a two-on-one situation, and the Bulldogs just wasn't having him blocking either one of them. So have to tighten that up a little bit, Big Tony, try to make a block next time. Second down, 13. Ball spotted all the way back to the 44-yard line. From the shotgun, Camel throws it out in the flat. This is going to be short of the intended receiver, Adrian Smith. Third down. So far in the game, FAMU one of five and third down conversions today. Ruben Carter saying, where did that freight train come from that's been hitting us upside the head today? Under duress, Camel rolls right, wants to pull up and throw. And has bounced out of bounds in front of the South Carolina State bench. They were making sure he wasn't going to go anywhere. The Tavis Henderson was the man who ran him out. 
And it'll bring up a fourth down punting situation. Yeah, Leon Campbell was trying to make something happen, but hey, every play just isn't going to work. You see, you have four South Carolina State defenders over there. And you have to wonder at some time in this football game, maybe Coach Carter is going to bring in the red shirt freshman, Eddie Battle, and get him some reps at quarterback just because you don't really have an established backup quarterback now since Albert Chester is no longer on the football team and Leon Campbell moved up from your backup to your starter. So something to consider if this game does get out of hand for the Flair of Florida and them Rattlers. You say does get out of well, hand? Well, if it continues to stay out of hand. <laughs> I think it's out of hand right now. And this one will take a FAMU bounce, and it will be down at the one-yard line. So a good punt by Wesley Taylor, who came in as a punter, averaging just about 38 yards per punt. Forty-two to seven, our score here in the third quarter in Orangeburg. College football at ESPNU continues Sunday afternoon. The Benedict Tigers take on Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. It's an SIC college football contest on ESPNU Sunday at 2:30 p.m. Eastern with Beth Mowens and Jay Walker. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Along with Eddie Robinson, Charlie Neal here, and you're looking at the 42 points on the board by South Carolina State. The most they gave up a year ago was 59 to Hampton. They also gave up 51, but that was to the University of Miami. We won't count that one. And then uh, they, they gave up 49 to South Carolina State in 2005 in this contest, 49 to three. And here's a carry straight ahead. And it's Will Ford on the carry. And he takes it out to about the 10 yard line. It is second down and one. Ford again bounces it to the outside, trying to get to the corner, has the first down, and out to the 17-yard line. So Will Ford gets the first down, so they get the breathing room. Remember, they were buried all the way back at the one, and now they've advanced it out to the 18. Well, it just looks like that, in my opinion, that South Carolina State players are just a little bit faster than the FAMU Rattlers and 300 rushing yards in the first half, and you can tell Buddy Pugh just going to keep running the football. Why not? If it's not broke, don't fix it, right? And then, then he throws an incomplete pass as I, as I talk about running the ball. Thanks a lot, Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every time you come down here, he says, where's Jay? Right. <laughs> he said, I never lost a game with Jay Walker. I said, well, you never lost with Eddie either. So. Yeah, well, last year we were here, they, they upset Hampton mm -hmm. at home, and so that'll be their big game next week if they continue to go on and win this game the next two weeks. Which is also on ESPNU next uh, Saturday up at Hampton. This time, McCoy on the keeper to the right side, and he'll be about three or four yards shy of a first down and bring up a third down situation. They play at Hampton. Uh, then they come home to face Delaware State. Then they uh, next three games, and then they go up to uh, Washington D.C. to take on uh, the Bison of Howard University. Well, I think the next two weeks for sure will tell the tale of this South Carolina State football season for 2007. They can get two more wins after this week, not looking too far ahead. I mean, they'll be in real good shape in the MEAC, especially if Norfolk State uh, loses today and somebody can get a Delaware State. Boy, what a blitz! The blitz package was coming, and McCoy had no chance. So this will be the first time in the last six drives that South Carolina State has not scored and that they will punt. Yeah, this is this old meet at the quarterback. You have uh, 27 and Cameron Houston and Daniel Shepard. Of course, Shepard had three sacks coming into this football game to lead the team. Now he has another half a sack, and McCoy is like, hey, coach, can we start running that football a little more? <laughs> So they'll punt it away. South Carolina State's Aaron Hare. Hare hasn't punted since early in this contest. First quarter, to be exact. And they're coming after it, and we're going to get a roughing the kicker penalty, either roughing or running into. We'll see which variety we will come up with as you see Hare getting up off the ground. It's going to be against Florida A&M. There's no question about that. Defense. 
Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. 15-yard penalty. First down. So to keep the ball alive with the punt. They came after it just like they did on the previous play where they sacked the quarterback Cleveland McCoy But South Carolina State gets new life and new blood and they're Gonna keep the ball and the ball is Spotted at the 32 yard line now first down and 10 and McCoy comes back on the field Yeah, that's a game he's had and that's just not what you need for fam. You I mean your defense is tired you're worn out You've already given up you know over 300 yards rushing and now you have to come right back out after you did stop him on third down and Give McCoy and the rest of that offensive line and those running backs another chance to get more rushing yards on your defense. And one of the things that Fam you is missing today is, you know, we talked about Tyrone McGriff, the defensive end, an all-conference player. He's being replaced by a freshman and Kedrick Washington. And so you've got some young people in there having to carry some big loads, and they're not doing a bad job, as you see that tackle there on defense, uh, defense by Florida and M by Joseph Wims. Number 99. And there's Kendrick Washington, the freshman out of Sebastian River, Florida. Playing sooner than coach really wanted to. He was planning on redshirting him this year, but then when the injuries befell McGriff, he had to had to use it. That looked like off offensive pass interference. But somehow he made the catch. And that's Ty make that Trey Young. It looked like in making the adjustment that he may have pushed off a little bit, didn't it? Well, I think you have pretty good eyesight, Charlie. I mean, <laughs> that's exactly what he did. He did push off a little bit. And the referee just didn't make the call. But, hey, give him credit. It was a great throw and a great catch. So it is still a first down. And uh, McCoy adds to his passing totals also. 38 yards on that pass as they keep the ball on the ground and run it with Jonathan Woods but Trey Young with the big catch of 38 yards and Trey Young has six catches for 93 yards in the contest today and if Young you talk, out of uh, Charleston South Carolina and when you talk about this FAMU defense I mean they only had three senior starters and two of them are hurt today and here's Edwards on the carry the woods correction on the carry so that just let you know I mean they're gonna be good I mean they, they have a lot of young guys a lot of new recruits a lot of a lot of players that coach Carter is bringing in here and, and so I mean, they're gonna get better as time goes on but when you when you only have three starters and two are injured and you have your backups and that's kind of what happens the first two drives 36 yards and since then wow 42 points and 450 yards by the Bulldog offense, and they're just taking advantage of a younger team right now. Now, remember, this drive started at their own one-yard line. They had the penalty on the roughing the kicker after they were held, and now they're facing the second down at about eight, and the ball all the way down to the 20, 21-yard line of Florida A&M. Florida A&M, Things don't get any easier for them as they look forward. They play Norfolk State next Thursday at home. Then they're off, and then they travel up to Baltimore to take on the Bears of Morgan State. It is second down and nine. McCoy throws it out in the flat, throws it away. The tight end was the intended receiver. He was the closest man to it, and that was... Breeland, Roland's Breeland, and it'll bring up a third down. And you've talked about FAMU and their continued schedule. I mean, FAMU is one of the, the story programs in all of HBCU football and the MEAC, so don't expect the rest of the conference to have any pity on these guys right. <laughs> as you continue playing. 50% in third down conversions a day for South Carolina State, and look at this at the five, and that is Philip Morris down to the one. Philip Morris, the junior out of Timminsville, South Carolina, and only played in three games coming in. And look at it. He just breaks a tackle here and turns nothing into something, and they convert another third down play. And we have an injured player down on the offensive line for South Carolina State. Looks like it's Daryl Pringle, number 76 there. In the meantime... If you look at what McCoy's done today, he's only five yards behind William Ford in rushing. He has 136 yards. Ford has 141 yards, and he's also completed 
14 of his 19 passes for 178 yards and a pair of touchdowns. That's, that's a complete day for a quarterback. And don't forget for up to the minute news for everything that is college sports, log on to ESPNU.com. It's an online service that's the gateway to the best in college sports. If you don't have ESPNU, be sure to log on to ESPNU.com. Type in, type in your zip code at the top of the page or call your local cable operator or satellite provider. Just go ahead and log on to ESPNU.com today because we are college sports. Now, fourth down. Of, no, it's first down. First and goal at the one. Capers, who has two touchdowns rushing in two carries, gets the ball again. He has three touchdowns <laughs> in three carries. What a game by him. <laughs> I mean, he has to be the happiest guy in all of the stadium right now, maybe in the state of South Carolina. I mean, who would have expected him to come in here and have three touchdowns rushing? But look at where he's getting it, in the red zone, and that's the where you're supposed to get it. Here's a young man didn't touch the ball all at, at all last year, hadn't touched it coming into the game, has touched it three times a day, has taken it in the end zone. You're talking about a 100% batting average, huh? Grantham for the point after. Well, it doesn't matter where you get them from, Charlie. Hey, I, I play fantasy football, and I take those touchdowns all the time. <laughs> 546 <laughs> remaining third quarter. It is 49 to 7, South Carolina State. Evans Capers, his third rushing touchdown today. What a day for him. There he is, Evans hey, Capers. Got my dogs. My boys in here. He is a happy young man. Came in and, I mean, everything they said about him was a heck of a blocker. Nobody ever said anything. Help me get me in the box. I commend you guys greatly. He said Trey made the catches for him, helped get him in the box. We get in the box, it's my ball, and I can do something with it. And he's done something with it three times a day as Michael Benson makes the return for Florida and M and brings it back to the 32 yard line. Yeah, but that's a great story. I mean, you listen to me say, I'm a senior, I'm graduating in December, you know. That's just, that's just, that's just a, a, a great job of him realizing that, hey, everyone else is helping me out. And, I'm getting the touchdowns, but it's a, a great team effort. And hey, this is a guy who's a fullback, so he's been giving it up for the team for four years. So it's, it's time that he gets a three-touchdown game. And I'm sure that's the first of his career. It is. Coming off a of knee injury that he sustained midway through the last season. Florida and him keeping the ball on the ground. But he is fully recovered. You know, he's been a key to the, uh, the running game of the South Carolina State offense throughout his career. In fact, he started the first six games a year ago at fullback before suffering that knee injury that sidelined him for the rest of the year. In fact, coming into this game today, and now this, throughout his four-year career here at South Carolina State, he'd only touched the ball two times. <laughs> so today he goes three, three carries, three touches. Right. So, he'd only, yeah. so he'll have a great, a great career average right. of five now, let's touches. Let's go back. Let's go, <laughs> let me talk about his average, though. Now remember, he didn't carry the ball a year ago because he got hurt halfway right. through the season. In 2005, he carried the ball two times. Four yards, two touchdowns. <laughs> this man, every time he touches the ball, gets in the end zone. That's what I'm saying. In his Charlie, career, he'll, he'll be a great fantasy league player. I'm in, telling in you. In his career, he's only touched the ball five times, and he's got five touchdowns in four years. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> it is third down, though, for South. <laughs> and that, that's one way to solve the red zone problem. Make sure he gets the ball. Well, just give it to him at the 50-yard line next time, and he'll still score I mean, based on that. <laughs> They're going to call that incomplete, uncatchable. That was intended for Adrian Smith. So that goes incomplete. Fourth down now for Florida and m 49 to 7 our score here and they're gonna get the ball back Trey Young who got it in the box for Evans Capers is back to receive this punt from Wesley Peterson or Wesley Taylor correction What a kick 
Trey out the six yard line. Trey coming up the field has a block. No flag still on his feet. Beats the kicker and brings it all the way back to about the 40 yard line. What an exciting return. I mean, a lot of great blocking along the way. And, hey, you can never let the kicker tackle you. So, 55-yard punt return and just getting up the field. Look at all the blocks. And they're, they're smart. They're blocking in front. Some guys are just letting guys go, realizing that he can do a lot of this on his own. As Trey Young just makes people miss. He certainly does. And now a new quarterback in for South Carolina State, and that is Malcolm Long, the freshman out of Gaffney, South Carolina. He was Mr. Football in the state of South Carolina. He looks like, look at him. He looks like, you know who he reminds me of? Bruce Eugene, the yeah. young man that used to be at Grambling State University. It's funny because I just saw Bruce Eugene this past week, <laughs> so I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> Of course, Bruce Eugene is a guy that broke all of Doug Williams' record. Had a great career at Grambling. He's a, a big quarterback. So they're letting some other people play here, and we still have three minutes left in the third quarter. And we have already, uh, that is, Buddy Pugh has gone to his bench. Leading by 42 points. Who would have thunk it coming in? Yeah, but it's great for Buddy Pugh in this situation. I mean, you're playing at home. You're, you're preparing for tough games against Hampton and also Delaware State coming up. You have all your recruits here. You had around 30 recruits on the sideline, so they get to see you really beat up on an opponent and have a great day. Now the big fellas going to take off. Now they list him in the program, and we got a flag late, maybe out of bounds. They, they list him at 235. They told me to say he's 240, but he comes in about it, probably around 255, 260. Well, I'm, I'm going to just say that maybe that's the... That's not just him. I think that's the rib cage that he yeah, has right. on. <laughs> yeah, I got a rib cage too. <laughs> so I think some of that is rib cage that's protecting him in, in case of injury. But I mean, like, but as a freshman, it's great to get him in the football game because you know, he's going to be the starter next year. And you have a senior quarterback, so. Oh, he's he's the future. Offensive face has number 15 yard penalty. Repeat the down. They said it was offensive face mask. Yeah, so. You don't usually get that because usually the runner can protect himself and, and reach out and attack the face mask, and they don't call that penalty very often. The last time that South Carolina State scored this many points was a 49-3 win over the same Florida and m team right here in Bulldog Stadium back in 2005, the year they went 9-2. The last time they scored more than 49 points was in 2004 when they beat Benedict College 51-0. Yeah, in the last couple of years, I mean, South Carolina State has always been the bridesmaid to Hampton. I mean, they can't, they always finish second in the conference and they never get that automatic bid. And even a couple of years where they've had some really good teams, some one-loss teams, where that, only, where that only loss was to Hampton, they still couldn't make the playoffs. So Buddy Pugh really has this team focused on Winning the conference and getting into those one double A playoffs. As you look at the numbers for McCoy, I mean, what a day. 14 of 19, 178 passing, and two touchdowns, and zero interceptions. That's just a great day. Fourth down, they're going to go for it. And the pass really drilled in there to Trey Young, and the defense did a good job of breaking it up. Yeah, but that, he that, showed he had a strong arm. That's the same thing I was thinking. This kid can throw the football. I mean, Let's not worry about his physique. That's what Doug Williams would always say about Bruce Eugene. Don't worry about his weight. Just look at his arm. And you can tell he's trying to go into a tight spot. You like the confidence that the freshman has to throw it in there. And good play on, by, the, by the defender for South Carolina for Florida A&M. But I think this kid's going to be all right to step in there as a freshman, even though the game is out of hand. You're still taking strikes down the field and throwing the ball with confidence. So they turn it over on downs. That is South Carolina State. First time in seven possessions they hadn't scored today. They probably should have given the ball to Capers today <laughs> on that fourth down play. They'd have got the first down, but they wouldn't have got the touchdown. That would have messed, that him messed up. up his average. If I, I'm telling the coach, if I have five carries for five touchdowns and I'm a fourth year senior, only give it to me when I'm within the five yard line. <laughs> I want to keep that streak going. And there's Battle. Of course, he's the backup quarterback for FAMU, who's only a freshman. And because 
You know, you have Albert Chester, who's no longer on the team, and move Leon Campbell up to the starter. So you wonder if Battle may get some reps to kind of prepare him for his future as quarterback of FAMU. Campbell still hanging in there. This one is thrown, and it's incomplete. Intended for Travaris Knight. Knight, a little shaken up. And he's going to be slow getting up. He was defended downfield by Benjamin. As you look at the missing leader, if you want to call it that, he left the team just before their game against Winston-Salem a week ago, citing uh, fatigue and... And Charlie, he was an all-conference quarterback. Yeah. I mean, look at his numbers, 25 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. I mean, 2007 preseason all-conference also. So, I mean, this was a guy that saw kind of, I mean, at FAMU and Ruben Carter was really counting on to be their leader on and off the football field. Like we said earlier, when a guy just quits the football team, whether it's injury or not, you always have to wonder, you know, what was going on behind the scenes. I mean, it was all said and done the right way, but it's still you know, a tough situation when the quarterback just quits the football team. Team. Even if he is injured, you would still like him to stay around and kind of tutor the other guys and just yeah. be a, a good presence on the sideline. And, and Camel had seen some action before uh, he became a starter last week against Winston-Salem. You know, here's some pressure on him right now. You know, Chester left the team having completed almost 50 over 50 percent of his passes this year. He was 56 of 95, 586 yards, three touchdowns. But he'd also throw three interceptions. You see this injury to Javaris Knight on that last pass play. And they're still tending to him down at about the 24 yard line. But, you know, you talk about former quarterbacks in Florida and M, you know, there's a uh, Quinn Gray who's now playing with the Jacksonville Jaguars in his fourth year there still holds the Florida and M record for attempts in a game. And he did that in 2001 against North Carolina A&T when he threw 65 times career attempts 113 uh, and then completion. I mean 1113 and then career completions 562 seven thousand three hundred and seventy eight yards 57 touchdowns between 98 and 2001. So of course uh, Florida and M has had a lot of people who've come out of that particular institution I mean you have the baseball player Marquise Grissom you have Nate Newton Bob Hayes Kwame Kilpatrick who is the mayor of uh, Detroit now Charlie why you skip over common I know you have him in your iPod and you can't you can't skip him Ooh. common <laughs> You got me. I thought, I thought, I thought that was a misprint. I know, you, I I know you did. That's why, you That's why I brought it up. Common who? <laughs> now he's a hip hop and rap artist. Oh, okay. I, I knew, like I said, I thought it was a mistake. He's an actor and smoking aces. I mean, you know, smoking what? Aces. What's that? Nice movie, that's out. Oh, okay. You know? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You had I mean, to keep me up to date. I will try. I never I forget. I I'll never you. forget the first time I met Flavor Flav. I didn't know who he was. Well, I know you do the Thursday and Saturday night games on ESPNU, but we got to get you out a little bit more. You yes, know? you do. Well, get a, get to a couple radio. movies and everything. <laughs> get satellite radio in the rental cars, you know. <laughs> Common. I thought it was a misprint. I thought somebody skipped. <laughs> right. Well, hey, if you don't know what it is, just skip over I, it. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> Willie Gallimore, of course, we talked about uh, him and, of course, uh, Althea Gibson, <laughs> Greg Coleman, Andre Dawson. Then Bullet, then Bullet Bob Hayes. I yeah. mean, here's a guy that, that's not in the Hall of Fame. Of course, he's deceased now, but it was still a movement to get him in the Pro Football Hall yeah. of Fame, the guy who really, you know, uh, revolutionized the, the, the deep pass, you hey. know, because with that speed, I mean, 100 meters champ and gold medal winner, they still have the Bob Hayes relays in Jacksonville every year to commemorate him. This one's intercepted, picked off downfield. And it's Marquis Hamlin with his second interception of the day. And you can tell, I mean, Campbell just let one get way too high. I mean, the linebacker dropped deep enough in coverage where he couldn't squeeze it in over his head. And the safety did a good job of making the catch. But, I mean, this family offense, the Camel, I mean, they're, they're in a transition, and they'll, they'll get things going. They still have some talented freshmen uh, running back and also young guys on that offensive line. So a bad day, but not a bad year. Not a bad year at all as they keep the ball on the ground. That is the Bulldogs continuing to try to run the clock down with Jonathan Woods. 
on the carry that time. And, you know, we talked about the South Carolina State team. And, of course, they have three former players in the Hall of Fame, the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and Marion Motley, Deacon Jones, and Harry Carson. And, of course, there's a couple others that possibly uh, may warrant it. Donnie Shell and Robert Porsche. Detroit and there's Trey Young and they're gonna call that one incomplete but a flag is gonna come out and it's gonna be pass interference and of course uh, there's one player currently playing in the NFL from the South Carolina State team and that's Chartrick Darby yeah it was great to see Harry Carson get elected into the Hall of Fame After of course he was so many years yeah, being denied played all those great years with the with the New York Giants won a couple of Super Bowls and of course, he was the player that invented the Gatorade bath. I mean, mm -hmm. He used to pour that on Bill Parcells every year, and now you see um, everyone doing that. Now the referees are discussing this. They may pick this flag up because I think uh, Sam Jones looks like he's trying to say, you really didn't want to throw that, did you? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, there's been a lot of penalties. The referees going to have to get some ice on their shoulders as they drive home tonight because there's been flags all over the place. That pass was up to ball. There's no penalty on. See, I told you. He, I told you, he said he's talking about a. You didn't want to throw that flag, did yeah, you? Look at, look at the score and look at the time left in the game. <laughs> I think all referees would like to go through the game and not throw a lot of flags, but it's their job. If players are, are having infractions, you have no choice but to put the flag on the ground. Well, after having nine penalties in the first half, none for South Carolina State so far in the second half. As the running back Jonathan Woods finds the going very tough, maybe a yard or two, and that's it. It'll bring up third down. Yeah, you, know, you try to be respectful for you to your other team, of course. Of course, Buddy Pugh and Coach Carter are both competitors. But when you put a backup in the game, you can't expect him not to compete hard. And as a coach, you know you expect him to try to score a touchdown also. So Jonathan Woods, I mean, hey, young guy on yep. the red shirt, sophomore, he touches the football, he's trying to score, and you and you, you fully expect that. And Malcolm Long, excuse me, in a quarterback. And it looked like movement up front. There was. I talked about the fact that he was uh, Mr. Football in the state of South Carolina at Gaffney, South Carolina High School, where his team won. Offense false start. Number five. Where his team won three titles, three state titles in four years. And Gaffney has a lot of players that play at the next level also. A lot of guys that make it into Division I college football and also the NFL. A lot of good players come out of that region of South Carolina. They trying to give Will Ford a little rest. He already has 142 yards in this game. He wasn't completely healthy coming in. Not at full speed. Had a little ankle problem. But still is getting it done. This one is caught somehow, but it's going to be short of a first down. At about the 35-yard line, he's got to get down to the 34, just inside the 35 to get a first down. And the first quarter, third quarter, rather, comes to an end. 15 minutes of football remaining here in Orangeburg on Youth and ROTC Day. What was started out as a great crowd. People are starting to leave now with South Carolina State in complete control of this one, 49-7, with 15 minutes of football to go. As we start the fourth quarter here at Dawson Bulldog Stadium on the campus of South Carolina State in Orangeburg. Along with Eddie Robinson, I'm Charlie Neal. This MIAC matchup. And we talked at the beginning, Eddie, about how important this is for the team to be victorious in this contest. This is a fourth down play for South Carolina State. They will not get it, and they're going to turn the ball over on downs for the second straight possession. So there was a fourth and short situation, and they handed off and were unable to pick up the first down. So there, Florida and M will get the ball back, trailing by 42 points here. Of course, neither team could have afforded a loss coming into this game already having one conference loss. But keep in mind, South Carolina State was picked to finish first in the conference. So I thought the pressure was more on them, especially playing at home to get this victory. 
So a new quarterback in the lineup for the Rattlers of Florida AM, and m and that is battle. And he looked like a new quarterback just now. He didn't know who to give the football to, but they want to just get him under center just so he can get a decent play and get a good transition starting off his, his first appearance in this football game. So there he is, 6'2", 216 pounds. He's a redshirt freshman from Astronaut High in Titusville, Florida. Redshirted last year as a senior in high school. Threw for 2,300 yards. He ran for 300. Back to pass now, his first college action. And he's still running, running for his life. <laughs> I tell you what, what a way to enter a football game. You're down 49-7. Can South Carolina State, this Bulldog defense is playing extremely hard, and your coach is going to make you start passing the football, and no one's open. <laughs> tell you what, kid, just keep running and take your lumps. <laughs> it's not getting any easier. But it's good that he's getting these reps because if, if, if something would happen to Leon Campbell, he would be the he, starter. You know, you know, so he would have to was, go. It was like when I talked to Reuben Carter and I asked him about his reaction to Albert Chester leaving the team. He says, well, you know, I'm not happy with it, but you have to adjust. It's no worse than if the, if uh, he had gotten hurt, hurt and I had to replace him with uh, Leon Campbell. So well, absolutely. You, you always have to keep those things uh, in the back of your mind. And of course, you don't want to take too many hits like this as this one's tipped in the air and almost intercepted by Tony White there, number 44. Well, I tell you what, it makes you grow up fast when you take hits like that. You get some hair in your chest after the game. <laughs> you figure out what college football is all about. So punting situation, Trey Young trying to bring it back. He'll be dropped at about the 12. In the fourth quarter is where we are. 42-point lead for the home team over the visitors. With 13-01 remaining in the contest, college football continues tomorrow. Here on ESPNU, Benedict College taking on Kentucky State in an SIC matchup at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Look at uh, South Carolina State's possessions in this game in the first half. They punted, three and out. They punted the second possession. Then they had touchdown, 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 touchdown. And they went into halftime, leading by a score of 35 to 7. They scored twice in the second half, coming out, scoring on their first two possessions, and then they turned it over the last two on downs. And now they have the ball for the fourth, make it the fifth time here in the second half. And straight ahead is the running back. Jonathan Woods. Well, I'm sure Buddy P will find something that his team did wrong when he gets into critiquing the film and everything, but it's, it's going to be hard because they played a pretty dominant offensive football game today, and their defense has played extremely well also, only giving up seven points to this point to FAMU as we have an injured Rattler on the field. Yeah, you look at Mr. Long there. Malcolm Long out of Gaffney, South Carolina. And of course, they have another big task facing them. That is South Carolina State. They can hold serve if they come out and uh, win again next week up in Hampton, Virginia. You know, and then they'll uh, be home to face the Hornets of Delaware State. Delaware State is uh, having an easy day so far today with the Aggies of North Carolina and T. What's the number 23 for the Aggies? They lose today. 23 and counting. And counting. And then, they, of course, they go to Howard. Howard just lost an overtime game to Morgan today in overtime 36-33. Morgan, as I said, won, and then they close out the season against the Aggies of A&T. Norfolk State right now leading uh, Hampton in the fourth quarter in the contest being played at Norfolk State. Delaware State beat North Carolina a and 27 to nothing. So you're going to have Hampton, of course, coming off that tough game with Norfolk State. Whichever way it goes, it's going to be a tough physical ball game. And you have South Carolina State able to rest their players the majority of the second half. So you would think they can get by Hampton and Delaware State the next two weeks. After that, the schedule is kind of pretty smooth for Buddy Pugh. And, hey, you never know what this season can, uh, can unfold. I think they have a lot of good football ahead of them to play. 
And unfortunately, it's Fabian Wilson being helped off the field. Got to start the day in place of Ernest Williams, who was a walk on three years ago, was out with an injured shoulder, not able to play today. It was and Ernest Williams' dad played here at Florida and then played baseball back in 1977. But Ernest unable to go today. So the knows. injuries continue to mount also. That doesn't help the Rattlers. That's one thing that you notice. A lot of FAMU players, their dads used to play here. A lot, a lot of continuity in what's going on with FAMU. I mean, they, they were really a tight-knit program. A lot of guys are recruited from within the state. A lot of fan participation. A lot of guys that are, that are here have relatives or brothers. Of course, McGriff, his dad played and was on the championship team back in 78. Right. So you see Albert a lot of Chester's uh, dad was a, Absolutely. was a, a quarterback at uh, Florida a &M. and I really like what Reuben Carter has done as far as recruiting the in-state guys. Oh, yeah. Only two or three starters that aren't from the state of Florida. Here's Jonathan Woods. But you know, a lot of kids and this, that Florida a &M tradition, the, the parents are saying, look, you're going there. Okay, Here, we're, right. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you want to do. This is where you're going to school. So there's a lot of uh, lineage there in terms of family ties with Florida a &M. And you look at how many young men on that roster had some relative go to Florida and M. They've been good for such a long time. And then you just just kind of look at, I mean, historically, they've been always the best HBCU school in the state of Florida. Of course, lately, Bethune Cookman has kind of given them a rival. But, I mean, Ruben Carter's really come here in his third year and, and established some really good things. Here. And you talk about that, uh, his mission statement, an environment to mentor young men. I mean, as we, we, Ruben and I talked yesterday, you know, it's the old old saying, you're only going to, the average kid is only going to play till he's 21, 22 years of age, but you may live another 48 years after that. You know, what are you going to do as a man? Well, and like you said, it, his son is a starting defensive end for the Washington Redskins who played at Cal, so, I mean, he understands the whole aspect of having some grow up, a son grow up in an athletic environment and sending him off to college because the coach is pretty much like the dad for those four years because those kids spend more time with the coach away at that college campus than you do at home. So right. I mean, it's, it's a, a very strong influence that Reuben Carter and that coaching staff has on these young men as they matriculate at Florida a &M. Troy McFadden on the carry. Winboro, South Carolina is where he hails from. He just moved back to the offensive side of the ball this season. He was at linebacker a year ago in 05. He was in the running back spot and ran for 322 yards and a touchdown. Now he's back where he feels very comfortable as a running back. Second back in the eye right now behind Evans Capers. I tell you, I think they're going to run out of running backs pretty soon, yep. South Carolina State. <laughs> no, actually, Capers is not in there right now. That's Jaeger, Jurgen as the up back, the eye back. On the carry, again, is McFadden. When you talk about the South Carolina State team, I mean, they have won 11 MEAC titles throughout their history since the MEAC was formed. Most of any team in the conference. In 04, they were the co-champions with Hampton. They won the first MEAC title since 1994, as this one goes incomplete. 82 was the last time that they were in the 1AA playoffs, though. But then when you look on the other side and you look at Florida A&M, they have seven MEAC titles, all five of them by Billy Joe, who went into the College Football Hall of Fame. There it is. South Carolina State has 11. Florida a &M with seven, followed by A&T, Dell State, and Hampton. But you know what's ironic? With all of the great names that came out of Florida a &M, and m we get a legal, legal procedure penalty. There's not a player from uh, Florida a m in the Hall of Fame. Start, number 79. Of course, the... Uh, Morgan State has the most out of the conference and Rosie, Rosie Brown, Lynn Ford, Leroy Kelly, and Willie Lanier, followed by Harry Carson, Deacon Jones, and Marion Botley for South Carolina State. Elvin Buffet from A&T is uh, one, and of course, Art Shell from Maryland Eastern Shore, and Larry Little from Bethune-Cookman University. Those are all MEAC Hall of Famers. This one is complete. And it's still going to be short of a first down. And, of course, uh, it's about five retired jerseys from South Carolina State.
Number 21 is retired. 31, John Devlin. Deacon Jones, number 66, no longer being worn here. Neither is Harry Carson's number 75, or Donnie Shell's 90, or Robert Porsche's 94. Those jerseys have all been retired here at South Carolina State. South Carolina State is also celebrating 100 years of football, so what better way to do it if you could go out there and win the conference championship and maybe make it into the playoffs also? Yeah, sounds like this game, 100 years <laughs> long. <laughs> Especially if you team from Florida. Seven-hour bus ride is going to be a, seem a lot longer going home for the Rattlers today. They trail by 42 points with 9.06 remaining. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. ESPNU College Football is presented by City. Let's get it done. And in part by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. Yeah, you know, people starting to file out of here. Dawson Bulldog Stadium in Orangeburg. Their home team having this game very well in hand. In fact, uh, they led 14 to nothing. It looked like Florida and m was going to come back and make it a game when Edwards scored with 13. 10 to go in the second quarter on a one-yard run, but before halftime hit, it was 35-7. So, just not a good day offensively for the Rattlers of Florida and M, who committed three turnovers in this contest. Only one of the three, though, led to a touchdown. And that was, uh, I guess, a credit to their defense being able to hold them off in that particular situation. But on the other side, you have to look at seven straight times and possessions by South Carolina State. They put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, and 63 points scored by Fam U. In, by South Carolina State in the first five games, and they go out and score 49 today. All right, we were talking about their low scoring output coming into the game, only 12, <clears throat> 12 points per game. Derek Williams with the catch. Well, they seem to have fixed all of those problems, and their defense has played extremely well, also. And that's the first career completion for Eddie Battle, the redshirt freshman from FAMU. And, Good to see him in there shaking off that last hit from the previous possession and, you know, being able to see downfield and complete a pass now. Here he is again on the run straight ahead, keeping the ball on the ground that time. And we've got a player shaking up for Florida AM. A little slow getting up, and this looks like Anthony Edwards, a young man who scored the only touchdown for the Rattlers today. And he's in a little bit of discomfort down on the, uh, down on the field. Yeah, and fam, you, I mean, it's been a couple guys uh, injured today. No, oh, they've been banged up. I mean, they've had a lot of injuries. You know, you look at who's not here, and then you look at uh, the injuries they've suffered in today's ball game and some of those that uh, were questionable as far as players playing today. Thursday night, ESPNU delivers more college football. It'll be a SWAC matchup. Arkansas Pine Bluff and the Golden Lions travel to Huntsville, Alabama and take on the Bulldogs of Alabama a &M. It's Thursday primetime college football and it's presented by Buffalo Wild Wings on ESPNU at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Eddie and I will be down in Huntsville for that one on Thursday night. Make sure you tune in. Alabama and m starting to roll a little bit now. Yeah, quarterback Kelsey Luke, man, he started off the season with nine touchdown passes and no interceptions. He's playing extremely good. And Arkansas Pine Bluff, not up to speed like they were last year, but we'll see if they can have a, a late season run like they did last year and come back with maybe six or seven straight victories. You never know. And even though this is going to be a loss for Florida and m in the 102 years history of the school, they've only had eight losing seasons in the last 61 years. So they have a lot to be proud of. That is Florida and m the school celebrating 102 years of, uh, of football, 36 conference titles overall. They won s uh, 13 national titles since 1938. Sent over 140 players to the NFL or to the pros. You know, won the first ever 1AA playoff in 78 when Rudy Hubbard was coaching, when they beat UMass. They were a member of the SIAC where they won 23 conference titles. 
as they keep it on the ground once again under former coach Jake Gaither who won 203 games in 25 years he never had a losing season and he has seven national titles when you talk about old Jake Wow I mean just some great coaches and players that have come through the conference I mean, Back then, and even now, you have Earl Holmes, one of the great linebacker players, the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, just a lot to be proud of. Their whole, their whole athletic program is pretty much well known throughout the state of Florida, and also the whole southeast and in the MEAC. Well, the South Carolina State defense has always been a tough one. Here's another completion for the freshman quarterback Eddie Battle, and it's a first down for the Rattlers of Florida A&M. And that's Isaac West on the reception as you look at uh, Philip Sylvester coming into the day's ball game averaging 6.4 yards per carry had four touchdowns rushing coming in today only 31 yards on 12 attempts. They held him pretty much in check. He had a 70 yarder call back against Tennessee State otherwise he would have had about 200 yards against them. He had 131 in that game. Here's Battle, the throw out of the backfield. He gets it complete to Michael Benson. And you really hope more out of Palm Bay. You Florida. really hope Sylvester is okay. I mean, that's that's the guy, you know, late in this ball game that you don't want to see injured. I mean, right. He's your Mr. Everything. I mean, second in all purpose yards in the whole nation. So you right. want him to be out there and be able to compete the rest of the season. I mean, this is only one football game. You still have a lot more of competitive football to play in this 2007 season for the Rattlers. Yeah, 2041 all purpose yards a senior year at Mariana High School down in Mariana, Florida. As nothing is doing that time. Good defense by Xavier Littleberry for South Carolina State. The junior out of Columbus, Ohio, young man who started his career at Clemson University in South Carolina, and played three games for them back in 04. Has played four games for South Carolina State today, and that's his third time he's tackled a running back for a loss this season. Third down, freshman making some changes. Yeah. Been watching Peyton. There's a chance for a completion, and that's going to be incomplete, but a flag goes down. Now, let's see if this is going to be on the defense down there for South Carolina State. Yeah, you know, we're talking about the Division 1AA or the championship subdivision, and you talk about the. 15 yard penalty. First down. Of course, Montana this week ranked number one. Montana. Grizzlies. They on North Dakota State now. Football championship subdivision. Well, they must have changed it since uh, I last looked at it. Now Montana is now number two. Northern Iowa had a big game today. As we look at that uh, standing as going around the right side is the quarterback battle big game today in the Gateway Conference was Northern Iowa taking on Southern Illinois both uh, unbeaten two of the unbeaten teams only uh, a few unbeaten teams left and I think it was seven coming into this weekend and of course Grambling came in this week at number 25 Hampton 18 Delaware State 17 as you look at the rest of the top 25. Next week, Georgia Southern takes on uh, Appalachian State. So that should be a pretty good game there as far as the uh, so North Dakota State went up a little bit. North Dakota State is actually in the Great West Conference. They played Mississippi Valley today. And the SWAC, and uh, of course, North Dakota State, the Bison, they are going to move over to the Gateway Conference next year. So you've got Northern Iowa, and you've got North Dakota State, and you've got Southern Illinois, and Youngstown State, and Western Illinois. You know, all those teams in the Gateway Conference. But tough conference out yes, there. Yes, it is. Just about as tough as the CAA. CAA, I was going to say, they have a lot of, have a lot of, a lot of teams, teams in there with Richmond and uh, Delaware and Hofstra and New Hampshire. First down and 10, Florida AM, 345 to go. 
course, it seems like all of the schools are getting to, you know, to be the bigger conferences. Of course, the MEAC is also adding Winston-Salem State next year. It's actually playing the schedule this year, but the games don't count. Right. Because there was some confusion. In fact, yeah. even Ruben Carter felt that their loss to Winston-Salem at uh, Circle City last week was going to count as a conference loss and they were coming in one and two in conference play but they they actually came in at one and one because it did not count even though they are coming into the conference but i don't think any of the games against winston-salem and the rams will count until the 2009 season All right so you have to put the MEAC at 10 schools instead of nine so you have you know, five and five at the five yard line it's complete and on the reception, Adrian Smith. And he's down at about the four-yard line and very close to another first down. And if, if uh, it is a first down, it'll be first down and goal for Florida a and I know Coach Carter has to be happy with the play of Eddie Battle. I mean, the red shirt freshman came in here, dropped the first ball, and took a couple big hits. But now he's moving the team down the field on a very good drive. He can put a score in the end zone. That looked very good for him on his resume just to know that, hey, I can get in here and compete at this level. And you never know, he may end up being a starting quarterback if there's an injury. No question. He's going to roll right. Throws. Touchdown to Michael Benson out of the backfield. The fullback. Nice little pass by the freshman, Eddie Battle. Came off the bench. Did a pretty good job. Drove the team all the way down the field. They put the ball in the end zone and put six more points on the board. This drive started at their own 15-yard line. That was an 85-yard drive. 12 plays. Got to make that bus ride just a little bit smoother back to Tallahassee. Yeah, it only seemed like about success. five minutes shorter, right? <laughs> after that one. And here's the point after attempt, which is good. And here's Mr. Battle. Out of Titusville, Florida, throws his first collegiate touchdown pass. And we'll be back. When hot. 226, the time remaining here. Charlie Neal and Eddie Robinson, 49-14. Fam Yu just scored to close the gap somewhat. Do we see it on side? No, it's not. Dominique Henry gonna bring it back. Make that uh, not Dominique Henry for South Carolina State, but Travis Jackson. And Jackson brings it out to the 40 yard line. And Thursday night ESPN U delivers more college football. It'll be a swack matchup down in Huntsville, Alabama. As Alabama AM hosts the Golden Lions of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Thursday primetime college football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings at 7.30 p.m. Eastern right here on ESPN U. And for more information, all going to ESPNU.com. At the 40-yard line now, Bulldogs of South Carolina State with this game well in hand and 2.14 remaining on the game clock. We'll get the ball at their own 40. With a new quarterback in the lineup and a fumble picked up by Norfolk State. Bam you. I said Norfolk State. I'm so, we were looking at some who we're playing next week. Bam you picks it up. They all wear green. <laughs> and it's all the way down to the 16-yard line. And that is the first mistake by South Carolina State today. The first turnover of the ball game by them. Yeah, it's fam, you. I mean, having some success at the end of this football game, and that's exactly what you need. I mean, you have your, your young freshman, Eddie Battle, throwing his first career touchdown. Then you have Joseph Wims, another young guy in here, coming there. <laughs> making some plays i mean that's always good i mean you still you still have some more games to go i mean this season isn't over by no means from family so you want to feel good about yourself leaving the state of south carolina at the 16 yard line fam you with the ball of south carolina state with an opportunity to put some more points on the board maybe they didn't need the onside kick huh all they do is this uh, Make a fumble. Make the team fumble is uh, the carry by Anthony Edwards that time. Preseason second team all-conference selection. I don't have Norfolk State for a couple weeks. I don't know what I'm thinking about. Well, we were just talking about the score. Norfolk State went up 20 to 13 against Hampton late in the fourth quarter. Okay. And I think that just had your train of thought. <laughs> With that excitement, that upset brewing. 
if they're if you call it an upset. Well, I mean, Norfolk State this year has been playing extremely well. Yes. But if you look at where Pete Adrian is taking the program from when he got there to now, a couple of years ago, you wouldn't expect that to happen. No, indeed, not at all. Trying to turn the corner, slipping down before it could get going north and south. As you look at Cleveland McCoy on the sideline. What a productive day for that young man. And I'll tell you, he healed on a season worth of struggling today with his performance. He ran for 136 yards and he threw for 178, two touchdowns. The only thing he didn't do was score a touchdown himself running the ball. But uh, when you figure the fact that he ran the ball 11 times for 136 yards, that's pretty productive. Yeah, I mean, he made all the... One, yeah. he made all of the right decisions today. I mean, and what I was impressed about was his throwing percentage and also the fact that he threw for two touchdowns. I mean, this is a guy that we know what he can do on the ground, and we know what this whole South Carolina State defense, offense can do as far as rushing the football. But they haven't been known as a very efficient passing team. If they could add that to his repertoire, he doesn't have to throw for 200 yards. Right. He just needs to throw for a couple touchdowns here yeah, and there. Yeah, he was only averaging 106 Reset. yards a game coming yeah. in. But what the interceptions, even, that was the yeah, problem. The interceptions, he <laughs> thrown uh, six interceptions and only three touchdowns, touchdowns. right and, you know he was 50 of 108 so that's under 50 percent completion exactly so i mean I, the, the thing we talked about earlier was if he could just cut down on his interceptions everything would be fine and that's exactly what he did today no interceptions two touchdowns he doesn't need a big yardage day in order to be a very effective quarterback for the quarterback right, keep looking at malcolm bruce eugene long down there. He's well, talking to Buddy View. He's gonna get me for <laughs> calling him that. But hey, well, I tell you what, it is he, what it is. He, right? has, he has a pretty good arm, and if that kid can come out there and throw the ball like a like a Bruce Eugene, hey, we're not gonna worry about his size. Just worry about his arm. Right. <laughs> One ten remaining. Eddie Battle, who's come off the bench in relief of Leon Camel. Leon Camel came off the bench in relief of Albert Chester. Chester decided, hey, I'm going to get away from here. Incomplete. It was there. He had a rocket, and he really drilled it in there. The receiver's got to come up with that catch. Yeah, that's a good throw, man. It was a little low, but in that situation, you want to put it low so you don't get to the, to the far safety. But... Good throw by Eddie. I mean, here he's putting one in there, and the receiver needs to help him out and get that score. Throwing it within, within coverage with three defenders all around the play. He still has confidence to put it in there in the end zone. It is fourth down now and six. But more importantly, they want to get it into the end zone. Now an opportunity to run for the first down, but they're not going to get it because he didn't get the block he wanted, and that was his fault for the way he set it up. Should have been patient. Yeah, yeah. but I, mean, I, I like what he did at the end of the run. I mean, keep in mind, this kid's a quarterback, red shirt fresh, but he's ducked his head and he tried to power for the first down, and you have to respect that. But they're going to get the first down hard. anyhow because they're going to get a personal foul, a dead ball foul, and I believe it's going to be against South Carolina State. Let's see it. This is a young Rattler team. They're not striking like the Rattlers we know, but keep in mind, these guys are going to grow up and they're going to make some plays, and they'll do some damage in the MEAC before their career is over. Look how he ducks his head and try to get, tries to get that first down. He's not playing based on the score. He's playing to win. Actually, the personal foul went against Florida a &M. So not only do they not get the first down, they turn the ball over, plus they're going to give South Carolina State 15 more yards upfield because it occurred after the play it was a dead ball foul under a minute to go here in Orangeburg South Carolina Bulldog Dawson Stadium and uh, that's the way we do it at SC State Matt Washington there number 80 on the sideline guys can take their pads off and kind of celebrate mug for the cameras a little bit yeah big game against Hampton and then the week after that they'll be back at home for their homecoming Delaware against, State against Delaware State. So man, two big weeks of I football. I thought this was homecoming today, though, with, with the, the crowd. crowd yeah. Of course, FAMU has the big game coming up at the end of the season down in Orlando in the Walt Disney World Florida Classic. And of course, they're scheduled next week. They're at home against Norfolk State. That's a Thursday night game. 
And then they have a little break before they travel up to Baltimore to meet Morgan. They'll host the Aggies of AT, travel up to Hampton to play the Pirates and close out the season in Orlando against Bethune Cookman University. So this will be the last play of the ball game, just a kneel down by the quarterback Malcolm Long and the Bulldogs of South Carolina State increase their record to three and three overall. More importantly, they go to two and one in conference play. Yeah, Buddy Pugh has to be extremely proud of his team today. His offense ran the football like they always do, but give credit to Cleveland McCoy. Turned around that touchdown to interception ratio, two touchdown passes, no interceptions, great defense. Hey, now you go on the road to Hampton and see if you can't get back into this MEAC race. All right, final score, 49-14, South Carolina State over FAMU. Join us next week at 10 p.m. We travel to Hampton, Virginia for homecoming for the Pirates of Hampton. Hey, welcome to Bulldog of South Carolina State and a MEAC showdown. MEAC football on ESPNU next week. For more information, log on to your home for the finest in college sports, ESPNU.com. This game has been a presentation of ESPN, a worldwide leader in sports. On behalf of Eddie Robinson and our entire ESPNU crew, Charlie Dale saying so long from Orangeburg, South Carolina, where the Bulldogs of South Carolina State defeat the Rattlers of Florida A&M 49-14.